<laughs> I don't know, but we'll, we'll make it. <laughs> we will bring the land use hearing to order at this time, 10 a.m., uh, February 17, 2015. County Manager. We have three items this morning for your consideration. Um, the first one is um, case number RCU 2014-00033, Verizon Black and Vitech. I think I'm close. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, Emily Collins uh, with uh, planning will be talking through this case. Thank you, good morning. So this is Verizon Black and Beach, RCU 2014-33. You're close. So today this is a conditional use request to allow a telecommunications tower and associated equipment a maximum of 60 feet in height in the I-1 industrial zone district. So here is our site outlined in the light blue. This is Broadway north and south, 70th going east and west, so the property is right at the corner. Um, it is zoned industrial and the surrounding area it has commercial, a planned unit development as well as some agricultural zone districts to the south. <clears throat> so previous requests on this site include, um, well it dates back to 1975 and includes landscape and parking variances. Um, in 1993 there was rezoning and replat of the lots and a conditional use for landscape business. Between 2002 and 2006 there were code violations for dirt, um, unauthorized signs, vehicles and outdoor storage without a conditional use permit. In 2007, the property was for it was in foreclosure and bought by the current owners, the Michael F. and Marlene Brancuccia Trust. In 2011, the property was rezoned um, to I-1 and a conditional use permit issued for outdoor storage. So the site is approximately 4.4 acres and zoned I-1 industrial, located at the intersection of Broadway and East 70th Avenue. The surrounding area is commercial, residential, PUD, and other industrial zone properties. The comprehensive plan designates the subject property in the surrounding area as commercial. Per section 32374 of the development standards, the maximum height of a structure shall be 60 feet in the I-1 zone. So the applicant indicates developing a new freestanding cell tower along the I-25 corridor between I-270 and I-76 is essential in order to provide Verizon customers with a seamless network as a gap in coverage has been identified. The proposed tower is designed to accommodate additional carriers and it will only be 60 foot tall and a, the traditional monopole construction with 12 panel antennas. All the equipment will be located within a prefabricated shelter in the 1100 square foot lease area which will be surrounded by a six foot chain link fence. Um, the applicant has actually revised this to be a wood screen fence. The applicant has chosen a new freestanding tower because there are no suitable existing towers or structures to co-locate on and increase capacity for the network. Verizon chose the subject site with a goal of minimizing the visual impacts from this tower and state that the proposal will blend into the existing landscape with the light poles located along the interstate and the shelter will be located behind existing structures and screened from adjacent neighbors and the right of way. So the applicant submitted a coverage map for the proposed tower which shows increasing coverage around I-76 and I-270 um, along the I-25 corridor. It also shows continuous coverage going east and west um, as well as north and south, so 70th and Broadway would be included in that coverage. It is staff's determination based on the provided coverage maps that the proposed tower will provide the increased coverage. So again, here is the coverage site. This is existing without um, the proposed tower. And then the next map shows this location. So if we go back, the light green um, indicates lower coverage and capacity. And then with the proposed tower, the darker green indicates increased coverage. So the tower conforms to spacing requirements from other freestanding towers outlined in section 49273D. And then 3E of the development standards, a 500 foot minimum distance is required between a cell tower and a dwelling unit unless the property owner um, signs a waiver and the applicant has obtained a waiver from the property owner at 180 West 70th Avenue and is a residentially zoned and used property. No citizen comments were received for this case. Transportation stated a county stormwater permit, state CDPS permit, stormwater management plan and best management practices are expected for the site. 
The Adams County Fire Protection District and Excel Energy have no comments or concerns. And CDOT stated any work done in the, the right of way would require a permit from their department. Tri-County Health stated a closed landfill is approximately 480 feet south of the subject property. Therefore, a flammable gas investigation plan is recommended prior to construction. All relevant comments have included in the conditions. So again, here's an aerial view of our site outlined in the light blue, 70th east and west, Broadway going north and south. Um, so I believe this is the restaurant and liquor store on the site, and this is the um, residential property here. Here's a closer view. Uh, the star indicates the proposed location of the cell tower. So as you can see, it will be um, screened from Broadway, and you may get a slight view from 70th, but it will be behind these existing structures. So this is the site plan submitted by the applicant. Again, the lease area is outlined here. It shows the proposed um, equipment shelter. Here is the access easement that the applicant has obtained from the property owner. So this is the traditional monopole design. So now we are, have some photographs of the site. We're looking southeast from Broadway. So again, the restaurant and the liquor store here proposed tower will be behind this truck. So this is again looking southeast at the commercially zoned property. This is looking down 70th. This is looking northwest at the intersection. This is looking directly west on Broadway. This is looking south on Broadway. So now we're on the interior of the site. <clears throat> So this is looking south directly into that area that would be screened by the three buildings and the proposed tower would be in this area. And from that location we're looking east and then northeast, so 70th would be behind these structures. That is the commercially zoned property. And then again looking at the intersection from the interior of the site. So it is staff's determination that the proposed request conforms to the development standards and regulations and is necessary to allow Verizon to provide adequate coverage for this area. The applicant has designed the tower to be minimally invasive while meeting coverage objectives for a large area. So this case was also heard on January 22, 2015 by the Planning Commission which recommended approval in a unanimous decision. No public testimony was presented at the hearing. The Planning Commission asked the applicant to elaborate on the design of the tower and the ability to add other carriers, the screening of the equipment, and the maintenance of the access easement to the proposed tower. The Planning Commission added a new recommended condition of approval stating, prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall be required to improve the access road to a condition as approved by Adams County. Planning Commission and staff recommend approval of this request with seven findings of fact, two conditions precedent, 13 conditions, and one note. And that concludes the staff presentation. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions for staff? Commissioner Odoricio. I first, I think, uh, I guess uh, we're going to be making some disclosures later today and other um, applications, but I actually have a contract with Verizon. So I guess out of the sake of transparency, uh, that's something that I'd like to announce that I've got a, but I don't think it in any way has any impact on uh, this application at all and uh, it will not influence uh, my ability to listen to the facts and move forward so can, can you clarify the contract that you have with Verizon I think it's um, $80 a month is it your cell phone it is really you're going to disclose your cell phone indeed wow Okay, well, I'm a Verizon hey, customer for, also. There so, we go, you know. telling us that, Commissioner Odorizio. <laughs> I'm a Verizon customer myself. I'm so. a customer with AT&T, so I guess I'll be voting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're down to one vote. <laughs> yeah, I got a two-year contract. So I'm to do that. I, I don't think that was the... I don't think it was necessary to understand that. <laughs> Thank you very I, much. I do have a question. Uh, are there any requirements uh, for landscaping or anything else as part of this pr project? The regulations do have landscape and screening requirements, yes. Performance standards for the cell towers. Can you describe, are those just the standard ones that we're going to have on this one? Correct. The conditions in um, the case state that the applicant will submit a landscape plan for approval to the department. So it doesn't specifically define how the landscape will look. 
Um, so it's up to the applicant to propose something to staff and we'll review that at the time. So I could read the conditions for no, you fine. or I'm, read the section of the regulations, whichever you'd like. I read the condition. I don't have any other questions other than that. Commissioner Pulaski. I don't have any uh, questions either. I just wanted to state that I am uh, secretly a member of uh, my daughter's Verizon plan. So anyway, <laughs> I go even deeper than you. But mine's only $60 a month, so I don't know if you're getting taken. <laughs> we don't want to go into how much I'm paying to oh, Verizon, okay. so. <laughs> um, any other questions that would be pertinent to this issue now? <laughs> Seeing none, would the applicant like to make a statement? First of all, thank you to planning staff. Actually, I should state my name. Adam Perlman, Black & Veatch, agent for Verizon Wireless, 4600 South Syracuse Street, Denver, Colorado. First of all, thank you to planning staff for a thorough um, presentation. Board of County Commissioners, thank you for taking the time to hear this case. Um, we are in agreement with everything that planning staff has dictated in the staff report. The one condition we have a bit of an issue with is landscaping on this site. We are currently, staff had indicated that landscaping may come up. We have transitioned from a chain link fence to a wood fence at the request of staff and then we've also place the shelter and our monopole in the location where it's surrounded by three buildings and we're a hundred or I'm sorry 450 feet away from Broadway so landscaping may really not make sense there's no irrigation we're adding some additional burden to the land that really doesn't need to be there the landlord has indicated that it's going to be an issue to try and water it and maintain it so with all the the built-in screening with the three buildings and it being set so far back from right, right away, it just really doesn't make sense for landscaping. Can, can staff please tell us which condition that is? That was uh, condition eight. Condition eight. Thank so you. prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall provide a landscaping plan to the director of planning and development, showing the proposed telecommunication tower shall be screened from public view. If the existing vegetation does not provide adequate screening, then fencing shall be required. This fencing shall not be used uh, exclusively to screen the property, but shall be supplemented with vegetation. Okay, so it does say the fence is not exclusive. It has to be supplemented with vegetation, right? Correct. And commissioners, do you have questions for the applicant? I, I do. Uh, this is for staff. This is a... Uh, when I drive by that property, we have no landscaping anywhere on that whole corner, yet we're going to require landscaping tucked in behind these buildings where actually nobody will be able to look at it. So um, at a sense of fairness, I'm, I guess my question is, is how important is it that we require landscaping in this particular incident, incident or instance when we don't have it anywhere else on that entire corner? Can, can, I, can I step in here? I think that you know, I think our, our roles as commissioner is to make sure that we apply evenly throughout the county um, the landscaping issues. Um, but I would say that, you know, we have to take into account different circumstances in different areas. Um, I know through being in the area and visiting this particular site that there is no views from basically anything from the south. Um, there is commercial buildings to the south. Um, there is basically no views other than the highway, and which is blocked by other buildings from the east. And then from the north, I believe that there's not a whole lot of uh, visibility from 70th into the property based on the buildings and the um, um, tire shop or whatever it is there. There's a very limited view into this area from either the northeast or from the um, northwest. And I do know that this property is pretty much a, uh, although it's not, I don't believe it's paved in the back of the building. I do believe that it is used or regularly used as a um, parking lot or delivery or something else in that area. I guess my question would be, 
is there anything that really necessitates us to put a burden of vegetation there and what would that be? So to respond to the first comment that the property doesn't have um, adequate landscaping per regulations now, um, previous requests on the site were for a variance for landscape requirements. So that would be why the site has the existing condition. Um, and then as far as why we would require that now, the landscape requirement is broad, but we do consider aesthetics, safety, um, we want to prevent vandalism of the site, definitely. So having a blank wood screen fence there may invite somebody to come in and do that. Um, so we're not requiring extensive landscaping there, but it is for several reasons um, that we would consider it and ask the applicant to provide a plan to mm -hmm. us. Now, if they propose a plan that they request administrative relief, we could also review that as well. So they, there are several options for the landscaping. Commissioner Henry. So basically, to, to prevent things like graffiti, correct? you'd like to have some kind of landscaping there, because then it would even be a, a bigger headache to maintain if it kept getting tagged. That correct. makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Can, can I ask, if, if it's a matter of graffiti, um, why would the plan be changed from a chain link to a wood fence? Because a chain link provides the security plus the visibility I think with a wood fence, one of the issues is is that people can get behind the wood fence and not be seen. Um, the chain link fence, in my mind, would be, you know, you wouldn't have the graffiti on the chain link fence that you would on a wood fence. Um, you know, I, I'm not trying to go against our own policy. I'm just trying to vet the, the sure. decision making process. So the wood screen fence is a specific requirement of the performance standards for communications towers. It does say a solid screen fence. Um, so that's why that requirement is in there instead of chain link. Commissioner Hansen. I don't know if this is a question so more as a comment. I, I can't speak for you know, decisions by previous boards in terms of their variances to landscape on the rest of the property. You know, I don't think any of us were there at that particular time. Um, I don't think that I probably would have voted to allow that if I had been a commissioner at that particular time. Um, you know, that being said, is this the most ideal place for landscaping? No, it's not. But just because the rest of the site doesn't have landscaping uh, doesn't mean that we shouldn't, uh, you know, rectify this problem now, you know, moving forward. And so, <coughs> I, you know, I, I, I'd be hesitant to, to, to provide any, any changes uh, to landscaping just because of the precedent that's on that site previously. But my question, I guess, probably to staff is, is rather than having landscaping in this particular location, um, could we instead uh, put landscaping on the site in lieu of that? That would be a better location for landscaping, such as directly on the corner, and require that as part of this application. <clears throat> so when we place conditions on particular land use, we have to ensure that there's a rational nexus. So if the uh, cell tower is visible from the corner of Broadway and 70th, then yes, um, that could be something suitable to help screen the facility itself. Um, what the planning staff has recommended is um, that the applicant proposed something to us, and that could include some landscaping and other portions of the property that would help screen the facility. Um, also, we would be looking at the material being used on the property to make sure that uh, graffiti isn't a likely scenario, and even if it were, that it weren't visible um, from outside of the property lines itself. So that's something I believe that's already an option for the applicant to seek uh, through what's called administrative relief. However, the board can also condition this particular case uh, should you feel that there is a rational nexus between the visibility of this site from 70th and Broadway? Yeah, you know, from my perspective, you know, I mean, I, I don't really want to get into a, you know, a fight over, you know, landscaping necessarily. Um, and it's an argument about whether or not there's a rational nexus. You know, what I would probably prefer is, you know, for the applicant to say, yeah, you're right, if we're going to do some landscaping on the site, let's put it in a site that's a little bit more appropriate. Um, as opposed to, you know, plant material right adjacent to a, a cell tower. My question would be, 
you know, to the applicant is would they be willing to include a condition on there that says that, you know, in lieu of landscaping at this location, we would, uh, you know, could potentially put it in another spot. And I, and I'm curious what the applicant would have to say about that. It's something I'd have to go back to my client about. <laughs> it's, um, you know, landscaping adjacent to our lease area is something we can deal with. Again, we just don't think it makes sense. There's no irrigation. I don't know what the irrigation is like anywhere else on the property. So it's about getting water to the site, how, in, how who's going to maintain it, those kind of issues. Well, there, there clearly is, is water at the site because there's a restaurant. So unless there's something I don't know about that, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, that uh, I mean, and that's why I'm having trouble with the whole we can't irrigate it thing considering the fact that it's right behind right. a restaurant that has potable water. Um, so I don't find that to be terribly credible, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, but, but what I'm trying to do is figure out what the right thing to do is for, you know, for the site, because I, I kind of tend to agree that, that uh, you know, if you're talking about a site that's kind of tucked in the back, you know, some additional landscaping doesn't make sense there, but, you know, trading it off for, for somewhere else, you know, might. Um. And while I appreciate uh, Commissioner Hansen's comments, m my question wasn't necessarily to go to the lowest common denominator just because we don't have it elsewhere on this side. I, my, my purpose of asking is I just, you know, there's this, we get comments from people in the public, particularly businesses that we hold very stringent in certain areas and then and, and not provide enough flexibility for things that matter. In this case, I just don't see us needing this type of landscape at the location of the tower. And I, so I think we're all in agreement with that. I think it would make sense to have landscaping in other portions, but finding that nexus between the addition of the tower and those other locations for landscaping, I'll admit, I think we're going to, it's laborious for us to try to figure out how that nexus exists. It's just, I guess my question is, is aside from the water, I do believe based on this, clearly the water would be available. The question is, is it necessary? And, and, and so, does this planning staff allow xeroscaping or other forms of landscaping that don't require vegetation? Yes, the uh, planning department and the codes that we use um, to guide us recommend xeroscaping, landscaping in all circumstances. Uh, but what is not true is that it does not need water um, to maintain uh, that, that uh, vegetation. So it, it would be used. Uh, less frequently um, sure. to save uh, water resources, but certainly would require water. And I, guess, I guess this will bring up an issue that I'd like for us to address policy-wise down the road, which would be to provide more options uh, so we have flexibility on establishing requirements where it's actually necessary and makes sense. In this case, I just personally don't see, I just don't see the, the need for us to put um, irrigated landscaping tucked in the corner. In fact, I would support if the applicant were to go back and talk to their, um, if they would want to voluntarily put it elsewhere on the property. And that's all I have to say on that. Commissioner Henry. Yeah, actually, I have quite a few xeriscape gardens in my yard, and it takes three years of regular watering before it actually becomes a xeriscape. Um, that's just facts of plants and getting them established. I personally would love to see some landscaping um, anywhere on that property. Um, I, I think it, it, it's, you know, unfortunately it lowers property values when you see nothing but a parking lot in, in a neighborhood. And that's all this is, it's just a parking lot with a, with a building and, and nothing else in there. So I, I support having landscape rather if it's around the pole as, you know, a starter or if it's somewhere else on the property. But I, I support our landscaping policies 100% because I believe it's time for us to start making a stand and requiring um, develop, uh, development with landscaping. Commissioner Hansen. I, I was going to suggest on that condition um, on landscaping to give uh, Avell some, and the applicant some flexibility you know, rather than saying that the landscaping plan, you know, has to be, you know, landscaping has to be right around the pole, you know, maybe adding a, another sentence that says something along the lines of, you know, in lieu of landscaping immediately adjacent to the cell tower, 
you know, landscaping on other parts of the property maybe, you know, may, may, may qualify or I don't know, you'd have to write something up. But basically what it does is it allows them to trade off, you know, potential landscaping in one location for something in somewhere else. Doesn't mandate it necessarily because I'm not so sure about the nexus. But it mandates landscaping, and then we could put it somewhere else that makes more sense on the property. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And I think the, the way you worded that as an added sentence to uh, condition number eight uh, would be appropriate. Just to be fair to the property that we're talking about, there is landscaping on that property. It's just in the north west, uh, southwest corner of the property. They do have landscaping on partially on that property. Um, so just to be fair that there is landscaping there. Over here. <laughs> okay. It's pretty, it doesn't go very far, does it? Uh, let, let me ask you this, Havel, um, since you said that was worded in, the, in a way that would be acceptable, can you write that out and, and repeat that for us as an option? Uh, yes. Um, we can basically add the sentence that says, in lieu of landscaping around the tower itself, the applicant may propose alternative locations uh, for additional landscaping uh, that would be considered by the Planning and Development Department. And that would be something that they could take back to, he could take back to his applicant and when they submit for landscaping, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make public comment on this application at this time? Please step forward and state your name and address for the record. Um, Rick Apple, I see, and uh, address is 1170 East 130th Avenue. I represent the landowner and uh, I, th I think we're losing sight of the fact that this is just an industrially zoned property. This tower is going to be unseen by anybody. Uh, it will actually be an improvement to the location, um, to what the location is now. It's, 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 it's just road base. Um, the, the community needs the cell tower. I, I understand you're trying to rectify what you see as mistakes from years past but the issue at hand right now is the cell tower and does the cell tower need landscaping and it doesn't if we try to landscape that property it's actually going to look worse it can't be maintained you say there's water at the restaurant yes but if you try to landscape that uh, north corner the water's 500 feet away I, I, I think we have to just look at what we're trying, what we're asking for. We're asking to build a cell, t cell tower in a location that's perfect. And in my view and the property owner's view, landscaping is unnecessary. Thanks. Thank you very much. I, you know, and I'd like to clarify because, you know, I think you made a statement that said that the t cell tower would not be visible. I think everyone is in agreement that the actual cell tower itself would be visible at 60 feet tall. I don't see how it wouldn't be. Um, with 12 panels, it would be visible. I think the, the con point of contention here, though, is whether or not the fenced area and the equipment is visible. And I think that's what we're talking about. So I just wanted to clarify that we're not talking about the actual tower itself. Uh, we're all in agreement that that's visible. Um, Commissioner Hanson. The other thing I want to point out is, is that I don't think anybody's mandated any landscaping anywhere on the property necessarily specifically. Um, all, it, all this direction, potential direction, if we were to pass this condition, would do is to allow the landowner to have some flexibility to put landscaping in areas that might be appropriate. Doesn't mandate that there's landscaping on the northwest corner. Doesn't landscape that there's mandating, you know, anywhere necessarily specifically. Um, just just allow some flexibility on this particular site. And I, and I have to personally take issue with the idea that if it's industrial, it has to look like crap. That's just not true, you know? I mean, you can have industrial property that looks nice with landscaping, um, and the idea that, it, that it's okay for an industrial to have no landscaping and look bad, 
I, I just think that's an attitude we need to turn around in Adams County. Okay, any other comments, questions? Seeing none, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to make a comment at this time? Please state your name and address for the record. Adam Perlman, Black and Veatch, 4600 South Syracuse Street, Denver, Colorado. And one of the things that I did forget to bring up is that staff had asked us to go from chain link to wood fence to help screen. And Verizon has agreed to that additional cost. They had suggested either screening it by using wood fence or masonry. We went to a wood fence. It was determined that that was the best fit for that area. So we think the screening is provided by the wood fence, not so much the the vegetation and I've talked to the landlord and he's not had graffiti issues behind there and where we are someone's gonna have to be back there for a reason it's not like people are just gonna walk by and decide that oh this looks good to to graffiti let me ask you a quick question and that is that in your dealings with these towers and the maintenance and does the required vegetation around this provide a or impose a different obstacle when you're doing maintenance on these or when you're servicing these towers absolutely it, not only is it a maintenance from the standpoint of who's going to trim them who's going to if the bush grows over six feet which our our fence is right now if it starts going into the shelter who's going to train or trim it that kind of stuff there are some imposed hardships that come with landscaping and Water being what it is, it just, staff has asked us to um, revise a lot of our drawings. They asked us to go from a, the crushed or the asphalt base to a pave, or I'm sorry, a gravel access. And we've done that. We've done a 20 foot wide gravel access for, fi for fire easement. So we, we've really complied with just about everything. It's just landscaping. And Verizon will do landscaping if need be, but it just doesn't make sense in this case because of the existing buildings. And let me just ask another clarifying question because you just said you applied with a chain link fence, but when I asked the question earlier, I believe staff told me that it's a requirement that it be a solid fencing, right? And so that wasn't a concession made, that was just a point of, right? That's correct. Okay. I will say the next case you do or you will hear is proposed with the chain link fence and they haven't imposed that hardship on them. So could staff please elaborate on the requirement for the hard fence? So it is a requirement for a solid screen fence. Um, so whether the applicant has shown us a drawing now that has a chain link fence, when they submit their final plans, building permits, landscape plans, et cetera, that would be corrected at that point. It would have to be a solid screen fence. Can I ask if a solid fence, even though it's chain link, if it has the filler slats, is that considered a it's, solid fence? It's not. Okay. Um, we consider the a solid screen material. I'm just trying to sure. figure it all out. Yeah. Commissioner Henry. Where else do you have these towers in the metro area? Um, basically just about anywhere at this point. And is there other municipalities or counties that require landscaping? Um, again, it's going to depend on a site by site, a site basis. Industrial uses, in my previous experience, haven't had as much landscaping because I understand that we all want. They don't every, have as much. But or any. You see, I, I get a little sensitive because it, it seems that a lot of people feel that when they come to Adams County, they no longer have to, to go by you know, what they put in other parts of our metro area. I just want my community to start cleaning up, and having landscaping is kind of important. And I find that. It's interesting that you guys are fighting it so strongly, and I'm not quite sure, you know, what what the issue is. I mean, we've tr we've tried to solve the problem by saying, okay, if you're not going to put it near the the tower, then put it somewhere else on the property to 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 make you know a difference. I'm t we're just asking you to make a difference in our community, and I don't understand what the issue is. The issue is, and we understand. It, it just doesn't make sense in this case. If there was another, it just doesn't make sense in this, in this area because of all the things that we have previously discussed, especially with going from a chain link to a wood fence. I'll, I'll say this, I think that, go ahead, Commissioner Dorisio. I think that what we need to look at is 
these landscape requirements, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but there's a functional piece and a spirit piece. And the functionality is going to clearly be taken care of with the, uh, with the solid fence. So I just don't see that requiring landscaping at this particular location is actually going to provide any of the functionality that we would want in this case. Now, if we have cell towers that sit out in the middle of an open field, it's clear that the landscaping with vegetation uh, makes more sense uh, for helping with the screening aspect. But also, let's look at the second aspect of why landscaping is usually required, which is the aesthetics. And I would support giving this landowner more flexibility to help us with the spirit of the requirements uh, without having to do uh, follow the stringent rules. I mean, consistently, I hear that w we are overly stringent on things that don't matter, but then not enough on the things that do. I would support the f giving more flexibility to the landowner to help us with the spirit of this particular ish incident without having to uh, become a victim of the stringent rule itself on this case. And that's part of what we have to do on the ground with our staff and as policymakers is to be able to apply some good judgment and I'm I understand that we are worried about the slippery slope when you give an inch here they take a mile but not in this case we have to uh, expect our applicants our staff and the people that come before us and the people that we work for to have good judgment and so all I would ask is that let's provide flexibility in this situation and uh, and expect good judgment on all the parties that are going to be working together and that's all I have to say on this Okay, can I ask uh, Commissioner Odorizio, I think that it was suggested earlier with the language amended with the extra sentence, is that what you're talking about too? Indeed, I think the more flexibility we provide, um, the better, because I think most of the developers and property owners out there actually respect uh, us trying to establish higher standards in this community. Okay. Anything else? That should do it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there any other comments that someone would like to make at this time? Seeing none, what is the pleasure of the board? Since I, I'm the one who uh, made the suggestion, I'll, I'll go ahead and make the motion and then have Avell you know, read the information in the record. So I would move to approve, and I, I need to make sure I get to the right location here. It's case number um, RCU 2014-33, uh, move for its approval um, with seven findings of fact, con two conditions precedent, 13 conditions and one note, uh, with condition number, I think it's eight, uh, with the additional sentence. And Avell, could you read that for the record since I don't have that in, right in front of me? Yes, thank you. In uh, lieu of landscaping around the base of the tower, a landscaping may be added to other strategic locations on the property. So to say that again, landscaping may be added to other strategic locations on the property. I think that's a little property. different than I really originally envisioned. I didn't. Because, because the, way that that, the way that that reads, um, it sounds like we're just going to add something to the rest of the property. And the concept is, we agree with the gentleman, um, Mr. Perlman, that this is a problem uh, at this particular location and may be unnecessary. But essentially, you're talking about asking the applicant to, to spend the money and the amount that they would probably spend at that location, perhaps somewhere else or in other parts of the property that makes sense, not in addition to what they would normally be required to do, but in lieu of. Uh, yes, I believe that's true. I, the word I threw in there, which was different, was strategic. Uh, no, the word you added was add, actually. Add. Uh, let me try that again. In lieu of landscaping around the base of the tower, the applicant may propose landscaping in other locations on the site that would um, satisfy the cell tower landscaping requirements. I, I like that. That 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 works fine. I think that was what what I was kind of going for to be to begin with. And and uh, and you know I, I I you know I appreciate what you're saying in terms of. Uh, I appreciate what the applicant is saying in terms of uh, you know not making sense at this particular location. Um, I think there's a difference between saying it doesn't make sense at this location and we shouldn't have to do any at all. Um, and I think that's the difference in terms of, you know, how I personally see it. So thanks. That's my motion. I second. 
Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Odoracio? Yes. Commissioner Pulowski? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Thank you very much. Our next item uh, case to be heard is RCU 2014-00034, uh, Verizon Closser, and Emily is here to talk to you as well. All right. So this is another conditional use permit request to allow telecommunications tower and associated equipment a maximum of 60 feet tall in the I-1 zone district. So here's our site outlined in the light blue. We have 62nd Avenue just to the north. And the property is bordered um, by Washington, which runs north and south. So as you can see, the entire area is primarily composed of industrial properties ranging from I-1 to I-3. Um, if you note down here, um, this is 58th Avenue, so the Denver Mart is down here just for reference on location, and of course I-25. So the site is located in the Mapleton Edition subdivision platted in 1916. In 2003, um, there are several variants or administrative relief requests for 0% landscape on the property. Um, this also included the northern parcel as they are owned by the same property owner. That request was denied. Um, ultimately, the applicant's third landscape plan was accepted with a 6.6% .6 lot landscape. So the surrounding area, as I mentioned, is industrial. The comprehensive plan designates the site as industrial on the future land use map. Per section 32374 of the development standards, the maximum height is 60 feet, and the subject request is for a tower of 50 feet in height. So the applicant indicates developing a new cell tower at the proposed location is essential in order to provide customers with a seamless network along the I-25 corridor south of the I-76 intersection. The applicant has chosen a new freestanding tower because there are no suitable existing towers or structures to co-locate on and increase capacity for the network. Additionally, Verizon Wireless was refused access to three neighboring utility structures by either Excel Energy or the landowner. The applicant submitted a coverage map for the proposed tower, which shows increased coverage along I-25, um, as well as the current capacity of several towers in the vicinity. All of these towers are more than one mile from the proposed tower. In addition, the map shows complete coverage along I-25 to the southeast of I-76 and around the Denver Merchandise Mart area. It is staff's determination based on the provide coverage map that the tower will provide the increased coverage. So here we have another version of the coverage map. The darker red area indicates maximum capacity, orange would be the next level, then yellow, and then green. So the proposed tower here would increase coverage around the corridor where it's reaching maximum capacity on existing towers. And then we have a similar map that shows the dark green coverage areas now, and then with the added cell site here. So the proposed tower is designed to accommodate additional carriers and will be a traditional monopole construction with 12 panel antennas. All equipment will be located within a prefabricated shelter of approximately 100 square feet, surrounded by what the applicant has proposed as a six foot chain link fence. Verizon shows the subject site with the goal of minimizing the visual impacts from this tower and states the proposal would blend into existing landscape with the surrounding utility transmission lines located on the adjacent parcel to the north. The tower conforms to the spacing requirements identified in the development standards and there are no occupied residential dwelling units within 500 feet of the proposed tower. No citizen comments were received for this case. Transportation Department stated the use of best management practices is expected for erosion and sediment control. The Adams County Fire Protection District and CDOT stated no comments or concerns. And Excel Energy noted that they own and operate existing facilities within the subject property and the developer must contact the builder's line as well as the utility notification center prior to construction. So again, we have an aerial view of our site outlined in the light blue. Washington running north and south, 62nd Avenue to the north, and then farther south past the railroad tracks, 58th Avenue, and the Denver Merchandise Mart area. So here is a closer view of our site. Um, again, both parcels are owned by the same property owner. This one does not have any structures on it currently. And then on the northern parcel, you can see the Excel transmission line. So here is a site plan submitted by the applicant. Um, previously, the access was to the north of the parcel, and it has since been revised, and it will be a straight access easement along the south of the parcel to the back. 
And again, the monopole construction with the 12 antennas. So here we are looking west from Washington Street into the subject site. So again, any of the buildings will be on the northern parcel. So we're looking southwest at the neighboring building here. We're looking southeast, so this is Washington. This is directly south on Washington. And then as we rotate our view, looking southeast across Washington and east at the industrial and you can see the transmissions lines that would run across the street. So it's looking north on Washington. Again, north. And this is a, another view looking into the interior of the site. The proposed location would be behind these trucks at this point. So it is staff's determination that the proposed request conforms to the development standards and regulations and it's necessary to allow Verizon to provide adequate coverage for the area. The applicant has designed the tower to be minimally invasive while meeting coverage objectives for a large area. The Planning Commission heard this case on January 22nd, 2015 and recommended unanimous approval. No public testimony was presented at the hearing. The Planning Commission asked the applicants to elaborate on the design of the tower and ability to add other carriers, the screening of the equipment, and the maintenance of the access easement to the proposed tower. The Planning Commission added a new recommended condition of approval stating, prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall be required to improve the access road to a condition as approved by Adams County. Planning Commission and staff are recommending approval of the request with seven findings of fact, one condition precedent, 11 conditions, and one note. And that concludes the staff presentation. Commissioners, do we have any questions for staff? Commissioner Odoricio. Given our concerns about and the whole dialogue that we just had on the previous application, is there any reason that you would recommend that we don't ask to make the same modification to those requirements in this case? Well, this site is slightly different as it won't be screened by any structures. Um, so again, the applicant has to propose a landscape plan to staff and we would make the determination as to whether it meets the intent of the regulations. Um, but if you would like to add the flexibility, that can be done. That will be my recommendation. And I'd be more than happy to hear out my colleagues' thoughts on that. Commissioner Pulaski. Uh, thanks, Chairman. Um, one of the questions, or one of the statements that I've heard made now in both of these cases is that these towers are suitable for other carriers. Does that actually happen? That does. I just was curious Correct. if we play nice or not out there. <laughs> it's a co-location. Pardon? It's um, considered co-location. Okay. All right. So, Thank you. So can I ask, can you go back to the picture of the diagram of the tower itself? And this, yep. So the proposed tower, the way that it looks right now is the dark lines. And then if you see the dotted lines, there's other panels and other they can be added. that can be added. Is, is that correct? That is correct. And those are the proposed additions that could be added. Right. Okay. Commissioners, any other questions for staff? Would the applicant like to make a statement in this case? Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Katie Burns. I live at 1748 Steel Street in Louisville, Colorado. Um, thank you, staff, for the wonderful presentation, and thanks for hearing my application. Um, unfortunately, I would also like to contest the landscaping condition uh, imposed on this project. Um, the equipment shelter associated with the freestanding telecommunication tower will be screened from view by adjacent properties, uh, excuse me, will be screened from view from the adjacent properties and the public right of way with a six foot chain link fence. Um, I, a side note, uh, the code makes no mention of a solid fence. It does mention, um, uh, let's see, having closed buildings, walls, or fencing, but doesn't mention anything about a solid fence. Uh, however, Verizon is willing to fence the facility with a solid six foot cedar fence um, if the board and city planner would prefer. Um, the property is currently undeveloped unmanned, there's no existing vegetation, and there's no irrigation in place. 
Um, I believe to plant landscaping around the fencing would be prohibitively expensive and upkeep uh, would be difficult. Um, however, the landowner did advise me that they are planning on developing the site in sometime in the near future. Uh, he didn't provide a timeline, but sometime in the near future. Um, if the board would require landscaping, um, I propose a provision of approval that perhaps when the property is developed or irrigation is put in place, then Verizon would enhance the facility with vegetation at that time. Thank you very much. C Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? <coughs> Commissioner Odoricio. It, the property is being used though. That's why we have, there are trucks there, correct? The trucks are gone. So the, the, the picture with the trucks in them, are, they are no longer there. They're, when I did a search on Google Maps, they're clearly there. Well, Google Maps is outdated. Okay, but I mean, how will that property be used from this point forward? As far as I know, uh, it will be used for the lease space for the cell tower, and otherwise there is no use on the land. So it, did the existence of the trucks there, was that against, was, was that non-conforming? I guess that question would be for staff. I can't answer. That's a better. I, I think uh, just to clarify, the, the, I think the question would better be asked is, does the condition on the lease allow for other uses on the property? Yes. We, Verizon would only occupy 1,000 square feet of space back in the, where that star is, there you go, in the southwest corner of the property, leaving plenty of space for further development. What, what, can be, what can the property be used for now in addition to as a cell tower, uh, Mr. Montoya? Uh, the property is owned I-1, um, so right now you could not have outdoor storage on the property without a conditional use permit. Um, so uh, someone could apply for a change in use permit, which would allow construction of a building um, so that that parcel could be used in accordance with the I-1 zone district requirements. Here, um, the application, of course, is for a commercial use, which is allowed in the industrial zone district, um, but there wouldn't be any entitlements that we're aware of that would be associated with this property besides the cell tower application itself. So if this were to be approved and landscaping were to be placed around that tower, anybody driving by should only see a tower there from now until the owner of the property comes back to request additional or other uses, correct? That's correct. E even the condition of the land itself for parking um, would require some treatment. So if there were vehicles parked on the site less than 72 hours, it would have to be on concrete or asphalt surface. Um, if it was being used for storage, which I talked about, which is not allowed, uh, they would still have to make some improvements to that surface itself. So as it sits today, um, as, as far as we know, there aren't any entitlements on that particular property. And so if there were to be other uses allowed on that property in the future, would it require subdivision? Um, not necessarily. Uh, we would have to um, check into that if there were ro uh, road improvements required, such as curb gutter sidewalk. Uh, that could require a subdivision and a subdivision improvement agreement. But what is clear is that if that property develops, it would require uh, landscaping of 10% of the site, and there's options of landscaping along the frontage of Washington that would have to be installed. So my comment then to my fellow commissioners is just like the application that happened right before this, I would recommend that we provide flexibility to allow the applicant to put landscaping either just around that tower or along the frontage. And I would think it would make sense to give the applicant um, and the property owner to work together on providing uh, the best means to do that. So I would support an amendment to the condition similar to the one that we just had a few minutes ago. And we'll be happy to read that into the record one more time to make sure it's accurate. Please do. So in lieu of landscape around the base of the tower, the applicant may propose uh, landscape on other areas of the site that would satisfy these cell tower landscape requirements. Commissioner Odorizio, is that? That's sufficient. 
Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. I would like to request again, would it be possible to consider uh, a delay in landscaping for when the property owner does develop the, the property as landscaping will be required at that point? I believe, as you mentioned, 10% of the property will be required to have landscaping. Are, are you suggesting that the monies that would be used for landscaping if required in that area be put in a uh, some type of a holding account until they do develop, like an escrow? That would be acceptable. And I only bring up that request because, as I mentioned, the site is unmanned. The property is unmanned. There is no irrigation on site. So. Um, I believe a, a delay would be um, for when for when the whole property is developed that landscaping could be um, developed and taken care of at that time. Right, Commissioner Hanson. You know, I'm familiar with you know cash and loot programs and things like that, but I, I don't recall specifically if Adams County has a cash and loot program. I mean, I like the idea, but but I don't know if we administer that or not. Uh, we do have a um, bonding mechanism for landscaping plant. Well, However, yes, it's related to seasonal uh, planting. I, I get that. I mean, you, you, I, I've seen other things where we have a guarantee bond of some kind, and that, that certainly makes, makes sense. I'm also aware of some situations where we didn't call in those guarantee bonds either uh, because we missed the timing on that, which is one of the reasons why I'm concerned about the administrative ability to manage this. Um, and if we don't specifically have a cash in lieu program you know or an account to put it into i mean that's a policy discussion i think we need to have because i like the idea of having cash in lieu of public land dedication or cash in lieu of landscaping and things like that um but but if we don't have a mechanism to administer it currently i'm a little concerned about whether or not we would be able to follow through so so there is one example that we've used recently uh, with the uh, board of adjustment um, where the um, cost of the improvements for landscaping uh, was paid directly to the parks and open space uh, division in order for them to install that material elsewhere in Adams County. But that is the only other example of that type of cash in lieu for a landscaping requirement. I mean, I'll tell you that, that I, I would request that the board have a discussion about this conceptually because I like, I like the idea. But, you know, sending it to parks and open space where it may or may not be spent in that location and somewhere else. So that's, exactly. that's, that's, I don't think what the intent is, is here. And so I, I, I personally would, considering, I think it's a really good idea. I just don't know if we have the mechanism to, to do it. Isn't the property that we're talking about also owned by the adjacent property, same owners? Yes. So they could bring water if they needed to, possibly from there? I could speak with them. <clears throat> Commissioners, any other questions for the applicant? I guess my question from staff would be, could we permit the water, uh, Mr. Montoya, would it be permissible to allow the water to come from the adjacent property to landscape the property considering they're the same owner? Or would that create a problem that we don't want to go down, the path that we don't want to go down? I believe um, they would just have to talk to the water and sanitation district uh, to get that new uh, smaller um, tap probably off of their existing lines, uh, but that is cer certainly something that businesses do all the time in Adams County. Would that be something that would require us to provide that flexibility in this uh, as a condition? Uh, if I'm understanding you correct, are you asking um, that in lieu of a water tap, um, they would have some other mechanism, or are you saying that the water would be from the adjacent site? I would like to allow them to take the water from the adjacent site, and I'm wanting to know if there's anything that we need to do in order to allow that to happen. No, that would be completely up to the Water and Sanitation District, which is um, something that can um, be achieved. I would like to bring something up. It is possible that the current landowner will sell the north property. Um, I don't know if he has a time frame, but he has brought that up. If that's an issue, um, 
will the new landowner have an issue with sharing water? And might that be a reason why the land, the current landowner doesn't want to use the north property's water? I was making that recommendation to try to save you guys some, I know, some money. But so I think I, it's a, I'm afraid that that might not be a, um, a, a good solution. So I. I was trying to do. I was proposing I it to give you more flexibility. You're doing me a favor, but so, I'm worried about um, if we're not if we take that so that we don't talk about other issues. But the, your recommendation may not be possible. So I'd hate to lean on that and not discuss other issues. Thank you, commissioners. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make public comment on this application at this time? Seeing none, commissioners, what is the pleasure of the board? Shoot. I've gone dark. Mr. Chair, if you give me just a moment to get the right language down. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of County Commissioners approve case RCU 2014-34 Verizon Closser. If you give me just a moment. With um, seven findings of fact, one condition precedent, and 11 conditions in one note with the modification that was discussed on the record to allow more flexibility for the applicant and property owner uh, for the landscaping requirements. Um, Avell, could you read the language for the record? Yeah, uh, if you don't mind, I'll have Emily Collins read that. So number eight will read in entirety. Prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall provide a landscaping plan to the Director of Planning and Development showing the proposed telecommunication tower shall be screened from public view. If the existing vegetation does not provide adequate screening, then fencing shall be required. This fencing shall not be used exclusively to screen the property, but shall be supplemented with vegetation. In lieu of landscape around the base of the tower, the applicant may propose landscaping on other locations of the site that would satisfy the cell tower landscape requirements. Thank you. Second the motion. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Pulowski? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. I'd like to say before we get into this next land case that, you know, I think that, you know, staff heard very clearly that we need to have a discussion on the cash in lieu of, and I uh, would like to see that proceed forward in the near future. Um, can we do this? Can we take like a three minute break? I know that, you know, we've been up here. We'll take until about, well, we'll take a five minute break until about eight after, and then we'll resume.
the proposed use of, ooh, there we go, of private alleys as primary access to homes is similar to the Midtown and Stapleton developments. Each residential dwelling unit will be constructed with a minimum two-car garage. Units with front-loaded homes will have two additional parking spaces in the driveway and provide two off-street parking spaces. Rear-loaded homes are allowed one additional parallel parking space between the garage and the paved alley on a paved pad where lot width permits. Front-loaded homes have a minimum five-foot front setback and a minimum 10-foot rear setback from alleys, so front-loaded homes are closer to the street. Rear-loaded homes have a minimum 10-foot front setback and a minimum four-foot rear setback from the alley. All homes have a minimum three-foot side setback with a minimum building separation of six feet, which is similar to the Midtown development. The PDP shows the site will be incorporated into the surrounding community, including the Little Dry Creek open space and trail system, the Westminster Station, and Midtown. The plan shows approximately 35% of the development shall be dedicated to open space. The applicant proposes a master community association or metropolitan district to manage open spaces, private alleys, and drainage features. So for the waiver, the applicant is requesting the use of alleys as primary vehicular access. For section 5339 of the development standards, residential lots created by a subdivision shall front and have access on a dedicated, constructed, and maintained public road. Per section 5411 of the standards, a waiver may be a waiver from the subdivision design and improvement standards shall only be allowed with approval from the Board of County Commissioners. So the site is currently within the Northgate Water District. However, Northgate has stated that it does not have the infrastructure or desire to provide services to the site. The applicant has obtained a will serve letter from the Crestview Water and Sanitation District stating they have adequate capacity to serve the site. The site plan shows two driveway access points onto 70th Avenue. The plan shows a local street through the development. The street is labeled as 69th Avenue. However, it does not connect to the existing intersection on Federal Boulevard. During the referral period for the subject request, the City of Westminster stated they are currently working with RTD to request CDOT to remove the existing signal at 70th and relocate it to 69th Avenue as this location is the proposed entrance to the future Westminster station. The alignment of 69th Avenue may change the ultimate design of the development site plan. So referral comments, the city of Westminster had several concerns. Generally, they were traffic control plans, pedestrian and bicycle accessibility, stormwater management, water service, site design, um, inconsistencies with the alignment of 69th Avenue, metro districts, and then connections to the commuter rail station. The Colorado Geologic Survey had no objections. The Colorado Historical Society stated they would only review the proposal if federal funding is utilized. The Colorado Division of Water Resources stated the applicant must submit a water supply plan for their review. Excel Energy requested a plat note regarding utility easements to be placed on the final plat. So again, we have an aerial view of our site outlined in blue. This is 70th Avenue, just on the north, and Federal running north and south here. This little um, boot access point would be the section of the Pomponio property touching Federal Boulevard. Again, we have the railroad tracks and Little Dry Creek trail system to the south. Um, directly to the east would be the proposed Midtown Park, and then Zunai here, so the rest of the Midtown site is to the east. So we have another site plan that was provided by the applicant. Again, this is all Midtown to the east, and this shows the proposed layout of their lots and the road system internally. So now we have some views from the property. So we are standing on the corner looking north from 70th Avenue directly across the street. And then we're rotating our view here, and this would be the intersection, um, the current signalized intersection of 70th and Federal. So now we're looking behind the gas station and the auto zone um, down a driveway access point looking south into the site. This is looking east. And again, this is behind the auto zone and the gas station. So now we are looking south towards the Goodwill site. So the fenced area would be the Pomponio on property to the back of that. We're looking southwest towards the Goodwill, so Federal is elevated here, and then the creek system and trails would be um, right behind the buildings. 
So here we just wanted to bring up again a closer view of the property lines and the portion that does touch federal. And this is um, the 69th intersection currently. Um, I believe it's a right in, right out. And this is on the ground looking in that same view. So here's that pork chop. Again, this would be access into the AutoZone site and then Goodwill would be um, to the behind me in this picture. And this is just one view looking south from 70th into the site and looking directly north at the apartment buildings and residential to the north. So the Planning Commission considered this case on January 22nd, 2015 and recommended approval 6-1 with Commissioner Mosco as the dissenting vote. Commissioner Mosco stated he did not think the applicant had sufficiently resolved the issues surrounding water and sanitation service or the potential alignment of 69th Avenue into the site. The applicant gave a brief presentation and then answered questions from the commission. In general, the applicant was asked to provide additional information regarding his previous working relationship with the city of Westminster. In addition, the applicant was asked about water and sanitation provisions, how the property would connect to Federal Boulevard at 69th Avenue, for parking analysis and ratios related to TOD and open space and trails connections. Several supplemental exhibits were presented at the PC hearing, including two emails, one from Diana Adams, property owner at 6990 and 6890 Federal, and those would be the AutoZone and the gas station properties directly um, at the corner. The other email is from John Warnick from Brookfield General Manager, uh, both in support of 70th as a primary signalized collector and Brookfield is again associated with the Midtown development. We also had an email from Michael Millage with RTD regarding the IGA between RTD and the City of Westminster and um, that was included in the BOCC packet. Language in the IGA indicates that the city will construct a new signalized intersection at Federal Boulevard and the station access south of 70th Avenue was the only uh, location given. We also had an email from Kirk Allen with CDOT which states they have expressed concerns regarding the close spacing of two signals, 69th and 70th, which will likely result in poor or failing signal operations. CDOT's position has been that one or the other signal may exist, but not both. If the 69th signal is installed, 70th Avenue would need to be converted to a three-quarter access. Uh, we also had Mr. Carpenter, the City of Westminster's Director of Community Development, presented several maps and site plans for the draft station area plan. These included alternative roadway alignments through the Pomponio development. Um, in addition, Mr. Don May from the Adams County Housing Authority spoke in favor of the Pomponio development. <coughs> so Mr. Carpenter made a brief presentation stating the city's concerns with the applicant's proposal, especially the proposed alignment of 69th Avenue from the subject site. He recommended the county request the applicant to extend 69th Avenue from federal through the proposed development and connect to 70th Avenue. The alignment proposed by the city would be consistent with their planning efforts around the draft plan of the Westminster Station. The development plans for the Westminster Station have not been officially adopted by the Westminster City Council. So this is one of the supplemental documents that was submitted um, by Mr. Carpenter. So on the right side of the screen we have Federal Boulevard. Here is 69th Avenue which I believe is also labeled as Westminster Station Drive um, and subject to um, a potential request for signalization. We have 70th Avenue with an existing signal at this point. Um, and just a general layout, this would be the parking structure um, for RTD in the site. They also submitted um, a proposal that showed, <clears throat> excuse me, 69th Avenue. And again, here is that little boot piece um, of the Pomponio property that touches federal. So on this plan, federal would be on our left side. Um, and if 69th went through the development and then reconnected at some point to 70th Avenue. Um, so one of the areas of concern is this triangle of residential lots that would be um, bisected by a roadway in the development. So the applicant opposed the idea of a 69th Avenue collector alignment through the proposed development, stating that a collector level street would diminish the character and intent of the subdivision. The applicant stated the development was designed consistent with Adams County plans, such as the Midtown plans to the east of the site and the Federal Boulevard Framework Plan. This plan was adopted by the Planning Commission on September 11, 2014 and ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on September 30, 2014. 
This plan shows 70th Avenue as the signalized primary collector and recognizes 69th Avenue as a probable non-signalized limited access. So here is a page from the Federal Boulevard um, framework plan. So federal runs down the center here. We have the subject site <clears throat> outlined in this orange color. So here we can see signalized um, intersection at 70th and a proposed um, access to the site from 69th but not as a signalized um, intersection. So here we also have a few other alternatives that were drawn out um, to show 69th going through the site. Again, we have seen this one previously, which would cut off this triangular portion of residential lots. Um, again, this proposal is for a collector level street, which would have higher um, vehicular movement through here. Um, the orange is another alternative that would go through the Goodwill site, um, then all the way through the south through the open space area proposed here. <clears throat> it also cuts through the property currently owned by Midtown and the area that's proposed as their park. Um, however, it doesn't address connecting to 68th here and Zunai um, for this alignment. And then we have another alignment showing a potential connection at 69th, but this is um, for a neighborhood level street. So this would propose access from 69th into the site, connect to the existing network, um, and also provide access into the Goodwill site um, when that site will eventually redevelop as well. And again, keeps the existing signal at 70th Avenue. So Adams County staff has been committed to transparent public engagement throughout the Midtown and Federal Boulevard framework plans. 70th Avenue has been identified as the primary signalized collector since approximately 2006 with the Midtown overall development plan and reinforced with each planning process since then. City of Westminster as well as CDOT were part of the referral agency mailing list and did not make formal comments on the federal framework plan. It was not until October or November, or actually both, during the Pomponio referral that the city responded with concerns of inconsistency with their draft plans on the west side of Federal Boulevard. On February 4th, 2015, Adams County staff met with representatives from RTD, CDOT, the City of Westminster, and the applicant to further discuss the existing 70th Avenue signalized intersection and the proposed alignment of 69th Avenue on the subject site. The City and RTD stated Westminster Station has been a collaborative effort for roughly five years, and RTD conducted an environmental evaluation as part of the overall project which recommended a signal at 69th. However, the scope of the environmental evaluation did not contemplate the 70th Avenue existing intersection. An IGA dated June 26, 2012 between the city and RTD requires the city to install a traffic signal south of 70th Avenue and does not mention 69th. However, CDOT has the final authority to remove the existing traffic signal at 70th and Federal and approve signalization on 69th Avenue. On February 13th, 2015, staff received an unexecuted IGA between CDOT and the City of Westminster, which identifies the party responsible for costs for a traffic signal to be located on federal at the proposed 69th Avenue alignment. City Council um, approved this IGA last week. So today, the Board of County Commissioners has several options, including, but not limited to the following. A require the applicant to redesign the development to have 69th Avenue as the primary signalized intersection. This will require a substantial redesign and probable removal of the 70th Avenue signal. In addition, imposing such a requirement would likely delay the applicant's proposal and could result in an increase in cost for redesign. It would also most likely result in a non-conducive residential site. This resolution may result in vacation of right-of-way, de-emphasis of 70th Avenue by shrinking the pavement area to symbolize the lack of full movement, or may cause substantial public confusion in relation to the pedestrian and road hierarchy at Federal Boulevard. Option B, require the applicant to continue to work with the City of Westminster to purchase the industrial property on the west side of Federal for a 70th Avenue alignment. RTD, CDOT, and the City preliminarily indicated this would require substantial redesign of 69th and 71st and Hooker Street on the west side of Federal, and possibly other roadways and would likely delay the opening in 2016 of the Westminster Station and, and add additional costs to the project. Option C is to proceed as recommended by the Planning Commission and staff 
and approve the preliminary PUD and plat with conditions to continue coordination among all interested parties. The ultimate disposition of 70th Avenue would need to be resolved prior to final plat and development plan submittals. In most circumstances, an IGA may be necessary to indicate the willingness of the City of Westminster to pay directly or indirectly for acquisition and construction of the westernmost portion of 69th Avenue and Federal Boulevard between the Goodwill and AutoZone sites. D is to continue this case to a date certain to allow all parties to, to negotiate a resolution in an expedited fashion. So in conclusion, interested parties agree this development is consistent with the surrounding area and would make a great contribution to the level of private and public investment in the area. The rezoning, preliminary development plan, major subdivision, and waiver requests are compatible with the following. The surrounding area does not create off-site impacts, is consistent with the area, compatible with the land use, transportation, open space maps, is compatible with the comprehensive plan and the development standards and regulations, and advances the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens and property owners of Adams County. So staff and planning commission recommend approval based on 22 findings of fact, 23 conditions precedent, and two notes. And then staff would also like to add some additional information that we received um, on Saturday. There is an email that has been distributed, I believe, to the commissioners from Michael Millage of RTD. And I would like to read one of the sentences um, from here. So this is in reference to the environmental evaluation um, and comments that were received. So conceptually, 69th Parkway from east to west would connect directly into existing West 68th Avenue at North Zunai and extend west to connect to Federal Boulevard while it will align with the primary entrance to the proposed train station. So we have that that we'd like to read into the record. Additionally, um, we received an email this morning from the Adams County Housing Authority. So I'd like to read that into the record since we only have it electronically. Dear Commissioners, I write to you in support of the Pomponio Terrace LLC's proposed project of single family homes to, to be developed on the east side of Federal Boulevard at approximately 70th Avenue located in Westminster, Colorado. I previously attended the Planning Commissioner's public hearing to learn more about this project and to speak in favor of it moving forward. At this hearing, information surfaced regarding differing viewpoints between the developer and the City of Westminster as to the location of traffic lights along Federal Boulevard. The developer would like to see the current signal located at Federal and 70th Avenue to remain, while the city has proposed signalization at 69th Avenue, which will be the main entry to the future rail station, and at 71st Avenue, the anticipated gateway into the station neighborhood. As you are aware, the Housing Authority owns property in this area in which we are currently proceeding with the plans for a redevelopment project. Over the past uh, few years, we have diligently been working with the City of Westminster on our plans most recently have engaged with architects, engineers, and a market analysis firm for the first phase of our development. During this entire time, we have been operating with the understanding that traffic signals would be installed at 69th Avenue and 71st Avenue, and the signal existing at 70th Avenue would be vacated. We are excited about the upcoming development for this area, and we encourage you to work with both the developer and the city to reach an amicable resolution for the betterment of the community. Regards, Donald May. Thank you, staff. Commissioners, do we have questions for staff? Commissioner yeah. Odorizio. Actually, before we begin, I, uh, I have a disclosure to make. Um, although I've consulted with the county attorney and reviewed the Colorado Revised Statute and the Adams County Code of Ethics, um, with that review and those discussions, I don't think that this disclosure is absolutely necessary, but nevertheless, I feel it is appropriate uh, for me to just place on the record that um, I have had a prior business relationship with the applicant in this case. Uh, that uh, business relationship in no way involves anything dealing with this case. Uh, that business relationship is is complete and it's over, And um, meaning I don't have one now. And in no way will that impact um, my ability to apply discretion in this case. I just wanted to make that statement. So once again, there is no employment, contractual, or financial interest that I have in this matter at all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I'll ask again, do we have any questions for staff? Commissioner Hanson. Oh, I might as well start the road discussion right off the bat. So let me see if I understand this correctly. 
So our framework plan shows it at 70th Avenue. Westminster wants it at 69th Avenue, as well as a couple of other interested parties. Um, and CDOT basically says we don't really care as long as there's not one at 69th and 70th Avenue. That's basically the way that I kind of read this scenario. So what happened, I guess, how do we all not get on this, you know, same page? Um, and, you know, secondarily, and this might be more of a question, but I want our staff's take on this first, but I do want the city of Westminster guy who's going to come up and tell us why he wants 69th Avenue uh, to answer this question too. Why is 69th Avenue so damn important? Um, because I'm, if I'm looking at the uh, site plan for what Westminster proposes on the west side of Federal Boulevard, it appears to me that the parking can come in, you can go into the parking at either 69th or 70th Avenue. And so, you know, why, why, why is 69th Avenue so important? I'm sorry, could you pull up the this is overlay of about. both sides? Yeah. It, it has the, how they line up for both sides. There was a diagram in there where you had them. This one? Well, I, what I was more interested in is Westminster's development on the other side, actually. The, the right. first one that you, you showed up, that's the one I want to see. Okay. I thought there was one that had them both next to each other. But I, what I want to, the reason why I want to pull this up is, is you've got, you can see 69th Avenue there mm -hmm. and 70th Avenue there. Mm -hmm. And so 69th okay. Avenue, what? We want it that way because it continues, uh, you know, along the south. Is that what the is that what the deal is? So, and that's a question for for staff. I mean, yeah. what's your understanding of the situation? Our staff. Thank you. Um, so I think uh, Commissioner Hanson, your statements are generally true um, about the characterization of 69th Avenue and 70th Avenue. Um, you know, our understanding is that this particular plan you see on your map here has not been adopted by City Council, okay. although they have been briefed on this particular plan. Um, you know, the, the county went through great efforts to uh, work with the community uh, starting in 2006 and then most recently with our Federal Boulevard Framework Plan uh, to highlight 70th Avenue as that main collector in and out um, to have that connection to Paco Street um, through the Midtown development and then eventually to uh, the station stops here uh, in Westminster. Uh, from that perspective, um, you know, the county planning staff feels um, that we've communicated and developers have relied on that particular adopted information in making business decisions. And <clears throat> um, another point is that the 69th Avenue on the Westminster side, uh, there was a previous RV park there. Uh, which had has been purchased by the city. Um, there's an existing uh, industrial building at 70th Avenue that is not contemplated uh, um, to be purchased at this time. Um, some of our, our research, um, ballpark information, uh, indicates that if the county, city, or others were to acquire the industrial property in Westminster at 70th Avenue, uh, it could cost in between $800,000 to $1 million um, plus relocation costs. Um, and also the uh, 69th Avenue alignment um, on the east side of Federal would require um, purchase of the AutoZone property as well as the Goodwill property. Um, preliminary estimates again there put that figure close to a million dollars to acquire that particular piece of property. Um, and I do not know for certain if that would also include construction costs of 69th Avenue. Um, so what we have here is a situation where there may be significant city and or county funds spent um, to either continue 69th Avenue or 70th Avenue. Well, I, I, I appreciate that interesting background. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what the salient issue is here. Why is one block so important? Um, you know, I can convey what the applicants have shared. Um, and it may be something better suited for them to I, talk I in more detail. I think it would be suited for them, and I, and I want to hear from the Westminster guy who's here, obviously, mm -hmm. um, as to why this is so important. I do understand that it's important that they connect. You know, I, I get that piece. From a traffic flow standpoint, we've got situations like that where, you know, throughout the, the county where the county street didn't necessarily line up with the city street, and I think that's a mistake. I think that's bad for traffic flow. There should be a connection between East and West. I get that piece. I just don't understand why 70th or 60th, why is one more important than the other? 
So I, I think that, you know, you stated it correctly. I think that's best a question to ask of Westminster staff when they have the ability to speak in front of us. Um, my question for staff, is there any other commissioners that want to ask staff any questions? My question for staff is, um, when you go back to the picture of the Pomponio side and the Midtown, where you can see Midtown and the, the entire area going through, I don't see anything, especially with the open space in there, where there was any contemplation or agreement to make 69th Avenue the collector street that would go completely through. Uh, everything, that, everything that I see has always been trying to um, utilize the existing collector street that we have to uh, bring the traffic from Pecos to federal or vice versa. Um, has there ever been any contemplation for there to be a 69th Avenue in any of the discussions? I know that we've had this process going on with Midtown for a very long time, and in all of the statements that I've heard, um, you know, this has been something that's been um, publicly scrutinized over the years until as of late. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, on the screen you can see my cursor. Uh, this is 68th Avenue, this is 70th as you're aware, as well as Zunai Street. And all of the plan documents that have been um, revised or approved or um, shared with the public included the um, realignment of 68th Avenue instead of being a right turn, a very uh, sharp 90 degree angle, was to gently bring it back to 70th Avenue to allow for traffic movement. Um, this did not disrupt the majority of the park. Um, this is something that the Midtown uh, developer, developers are planning on doing. It's been endorsed by the county on several different occasions and with the community. And as a result, um, the Brookfield folks have submitted a letter in support of 70th Avenue remaining uh, that collector road. Okay, but there hasn't been any discussions on connecting 68th Avenue, I guess, in that case. Uh, no, the, the Midtown the folks have not um, planned or contemplated in any serious manner the connection of 68th Avenue to Federal Boulevard okay. through their park. And then let me ask you another question because what was brought up was that they plan to have a, well, let me go back. The, so the idea from CDOT is they don't want to have a traffic signal on 69th and 70th. But yet, if I heard correctly in the presentation, there was a plan for a traffic signal on 71st and 69th. That's Am I cor correct? That's, that's correct. That's what you And you is heard. there not already a signal on 72nd? That's correct. So I guess my question again would be, it's okay to have a signal on 71st and 72nd, but not 69th and 70th. Uh, the, the highlight of the discussions has been 69th Avenue. Uh -huh. um, 71st has been discussed, and the information we've received um, from CDOT themselves has indicated that the traffic study that they have reviewed to allow a traffic light at 71st and 69th uh, just doesn't meet the numbers at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's our understanding based on the conversations with CDOT. Um, and I don't know how that changes once the Westminster Station is um, implemented and or the Pomponio um, development is, is approved. And, and then let me ask you another question. So the um, IGA that was struck by Westminster, that is not an executed IGA? Is that, I, I understood that you said Westminster had, had discussed it last week and passed it, but that's not an executed IGA with CDOT at this time, right? So the version that we obtained last week was not signed, um, but we believe it has been executed and City Council approved it, but um, we may need clarification from the City of Westminster on the and status that, of that And that document. has been executed by Westminster, but do they have CDOT signature? Is, not has to it our been? knowledge. Okay. Okay. Commissioners, do we have more questions for staff? Okay, would the applicant like to give a presentation? Please state your name and address for the record. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, James Merlino, uh, 18 North Douglas Drive, Broomfield. 
Colorado, and I am the manager of Pomponio Terrace Holdings uh, LLC, the applicant and the owner of the property in question. I first want to thank Emily Collins and Chris LaRue for all their work on this uh, project. Uh, they've been very helpful uh, to us throughout the project, and have, but have also represented the county's positions very well and aggressively. You know, we're really proud to be part of the, we call the sort of new renaissance of what is the gateway to Adams County along Federal Boulevard. In addition to our project, you have the Midtown project, uh, ARIA, and the Dana Crawford project that are all happening, private investment along this very important gateway into, Fred into Adams County uh, along the Little Dry Creek Valley. I think it's important that we look at that and uh, have great hope for the future as these projects move forward. It was mentioned that I had done some work with uh, Westminster, the city of Westminster, on this area, and that was really part of a sort of a planning exercise. I was introduced to the area through Westminster, and at that point, one of the options that was on the table was annexing the Pomponio pro the property into Westminster. And so there, I know quite a bit about the property and the surrounding area, and I believe that our current plan uh, fits well into that planning process, providing the single for the high density single family housing that will be part of the mix of housing types and development that will go on in the greater TOD area. But during that process, there was a change of conditions when David Weekly Homes, one of the builders from Midtown, uh, came on board, is now the group that will be purchasing the lots from us. And they expressed the desire to remain in Adams County, have the jurisdiction in Adams County for a number of, number of reasons. One, the experience at Midtown in going through the approval process in Adams County and just want to take, take advantage of the lessons learned and have some consistency in that approval process. There's also, they bring the concern, the time to market. We're in a great market right now for single family homes. David Weekly and Brookfield took great market risk and when they built Midtown and they show um, what portion of the housing stock uh, that can be built in this current market cycle at this time, uh, and that's the single family detached product type. So they wanted to stay in the county. Also, we looked at the predictability that was given us by the Federal Boulevard Framework Plan. Um, we relied on that plan, we relied on the elements of the plan, and we believe our plan uh, conforms to those, specifically with regard to the, the keeping of 70th Avenue as the main collector. As far as infrastructure and cooperation with other agencies, um, we worked with Crestview Water and Sanitation and are providing um, some additional sewer capacity through their sewer system, but also connecting, um, I want to go to the next slide, as you saw there. There are two, I'm learning a lot about engineering um, in this process, but there, our site is sort of right in the middle of two pressure uh, gradient areas. And by connecting to there, we get to build a connector between those two under the new transit line that is of great importance to them. It was news to me, but it's great importance to uh, Crestview that we're doing that. While we were doing that, we've cooperated with the Denver Transit Partners, um, Crestview, and um, Northgate, the existing water district. So we've been working with a number of agencies to improve the delivery of utilities to the area, including delivery of water to the Goodwill site, which is in the city of Westminster. There's also a question of costs. Um, the city of Westminster is one of two jurisdictions in Colorado that requires sprinklers in all single family uh, homes. And that would, be a, that would be a cost that would be carried, a burden that would be put on uh, the home builder. And so weekly also uh, raise that as a, con as a concern and another reason why they'd like to stay in the county. As far as the, our property rights, uh, we are not an enclave and uh, we have a choice with regard to annexation. Go to the next slide. So these talks, I've already mentioned about the Federal Boulevard Framework Plan, um, about our need for, you can go to the next slide, about how we're complying with the 
uh, requirements of the Federal Boulevard Framework Plan regarding providing high quality housing for Gen uh, X and Y and low maintenance housing for seniors. This is a, again, this is sort of the phenomenon that they discovered at Midtown that really came as a surprise to most of, most of the home building community in the Denver metro area is the popularity of smaller lots, slightly smaller unit single family homes that have very little maintenance with regard to the yard and other sort of larger lot properties. So we want to continue down that path and tap into that market. Um, we're adding an additional greenway or adding additional connections to the greenways or cooperating with that through our open space, that green dotted line. There's a proposed path to go through the Goodwill project eventually to provide bicycle and pedestrian access um, under the underpass but on the north side of the transit system there. Go to the next slide. And that shows the show, we're missing the connection there. But um, our general, general area, we have an internal, uh, that's my internal roadway system. Hang on a second. We can go to the next slide and talk about the muses. Uh, one of the reasons we need the waiver is to create the muses, uh, which are uh, pay an unpaved greenways between the houses where the street normally would go. The access to the houses is done through the alleys to the rear. Go to the next slide. And these muses are very popular in the Stapleton development and other places around the country. Uh, they provide recreational opportunities, but also you know informal meeting areas, and also a way for people to get around without an automobile to walk or ride their bikes uh, throughout the project. Go to the next one. The housing types will be uh, are already being built. Uh, similar housing types are being built in Midtown, and uh, those types of, of designs will be carried out through our project as well biweekly. Internal circulation of the property is consistent with the Federal Boulevard Framework, framework Plan. Uh, the green areas are the uh, trails inside the trails in the open space and the muses. So this is the I believe this is one of the maps from the Federal Boulevard Framework Plan that sh clearly shows uh, the brown line along 70, uh, 70th is the collector. Doesn't show any, any connector there at 69th. Um, it was indicated on one of the later maps that there would be some kind of an access there, but not as a fully signalized intersection and not that 69th would be a collector. And we move forward dependent on these documents. And when you look at it um, from sort of a common sense standpoint, um, you know, there's an existing signal that has been uh, placed there, um, that is in place. It is used by the neighborhood to the uh, northeast, which we learned actually at the, was reinforced at the Planning Commission hearing. Because when those neighbors want to go south on uh, Federal Boulevard, rather than trying to make a left on 69th from their neighborhood, they travel down to 70th and make the left the uh, left hand turn at the signal. Um, and we're talking about a small distance. We're talking about a distance of 450 feet between the 69th and the 70th signal um, that ha would have a substantial impact on our property, but I, don't, I think a de minimis impact on what is happening on Federal Boulevard. With regard to the two sides of the street, I think the staff captured it pretty well as far as what would have to happen to make uh, things change for 70th Street on the west side. There is a single landowner and uh, franchisee in the right of way if you continue 70th through. And you have the uh, Dan Adams is the heir to the Pomponio estate, and she owns the property where AutoZone is, and AutoZone is a national uh, retailer also. That is, by the way, the highest grossing AutoZone in the metro area. One of the issues I've had, or you know, I've had throughout this, is dealing with Westminster and sort of what is really happening on the east side of Federal Boulevard. This is a blow up of the plan that was given out, I believe, at the last meeting. We've added some lines on here. There's the dotted lines are proposed streets. The solid lines are existing streets. We have signals up on on 72nd, and is the signal existing on 70th. You know, in the meeting on the 4th, well, another important thing to point out, and I think this leads a little bit to uh, Commissioner Hansen's question. If you notice that 69th on this map 
There are those little buses down there, a little, little alleyway and buses along there on the south side. For a long time, it was proposed that the buses would drop off and pick up at, six, at that area off of 69th. It's my understanding that now that area has been moved up adjacent to the parking structure, which moves it up closer to 70th, but also I think, just for, again, a common sense look, you know, eliminate some of the focus on 69th. Because what was contemplated in the meeting, or what is contemplated by RTD and Westminster, is most of the traffic and uh, most of the passengers for this will be coming from the north down Federal. In their proposal, all the buses would travel all the way down Federal, enter, enter at 69th, go up to the parking structure, turn around, and exit at 69th. Again, given the new configuration, Again, I don't, I'm not an engineer by training, but 70th provides a much shorter transit area and is much more efficient. You also have, and they seem to ignore throughout this discussion, any access in and out for parking in the buses through the existing street grid, uh, augmented by some minor changes up to 72nd. Beyond that, it was also shown at the, or mentioned at the February 4th meeting, that the whole idea of a parking, when they started the EES, or the Environmental Evaluation, there was no parking structure. All of the area um, that is the Nolan RV property between 70th and 69th was going to be surface parking. So there's been very little consistency, um, even as soon as uh, the last meeting, or you know, the meeting on the 4th, as to what their plans are west of Federal Boulevard. Uh, this is another diagram that we've gotten from, this is one of the exhibits, uh, and it shows again both 70th and 69th being constructed uh, in relation to the parking structure and the transit station. The next slide is a quote from, uh, this came in to the board packet, where they stated that, you know, and again it gets to the whole idea, CDOT's sort of driving this, if you're going to have 69th, you're going to have 70th. Uh, my understanding is 69th is not warranted at this time because there's no traffic there at all. Um, but I think, the syst I think this uh, um, giving all the power to uh, CDOT in this case um, is not exactly the best public poli policy decision given that there are communities affected on both sides of this uh, discussion. In the IGA that's mentioned, just one note. And if you go to the bottom of it, in recital number four, it says, and again, this goes to what is, what is happening on the Westminster side, anticipates um, a project from local aid that will contribute to an anticipated project at 69th. Um, the idea that this is set in stone in any way, I think, is, is not the case. To the point of transparency, this was the map that was blown up earlier. Um, that was handed out at the last planning uh, commission at the planning commission hearing. It shows both 69th and 70th going through. It shows the old location of the bus depot. So, as far as a public discussion of this, it's a little hard to have a public discussion when the uh, exhibits and everything on the west side of the street keeps changing and is not kept current, even while you're having discussion on point of the issue. You've seen these in the staff report. Uh, the proposed alignment to the south. Um, is no longer being considered, the proposed alignment to the top really does devalue uh, the property significantly. This is a 248-unit uh, subdivision. Um, it's right on the cusp of what is you know, economical as far as doing It's a fairly small subdivision these days. If you put the roadway through as a collector at the top, you really isolate uh, significant, about 20 percent of the lots in a little island up there, and you actually have to take out a significant number of lots to accommodate that cut through. As an alternative, uh, as you see, um, you know, if you do do something at 69th as far as a signal or whatever happens there, it is important to have it come in to serve the Goodwill property, again, which is in the city of uh, Westminster, and could connect to our local street to allow for movement uh, up to 70th by folks coming out of the Goodwill property, people coming across uh, Federal from 60 on 69th. 
Uh, this construction uh, proposal just shows how quickly we're moving. All of this was done at risk, of course, where, um, but shows you that we really want to get to get these lots over to David Weekly in the July, August time frame. So time is very important. So commenting on the three, on the four options, the next slide. Option A, as I've mentioned, running it through the property um, has problems with the commercial tenants and also with the redesign, the commercial tenants on the east side of Federal AutoZone and also with the redesign of our project. Uh, option B, um, you know, we've been working with Westminster and as you see, as it moves along, um, they seem to be putting up other roadblocks along the way. We would like to have a clear direction, a much clearer direction from the uh, board today if possible. Option C, again, sort of continuing the discussion beyond today, um, I don't know how much new information is going to be gotten uh, at this point uh, in the discussion as we move forward. And option D is also uh, brings in the element of delay and we're on a very uh, short time frame for both contractual obligations, um, but also to meet, again, uh, clear market demand that will help, help us as first actors um, in this transitory development area. I mean, other than the RTD uh, parking garage, I don't believe there are any other private developers building in the TOD or adjacent to it at this point. So as first actors, we would like to see a project that conforms to everything in the Federal Boulevard framework plan, but we don't want to be burdened with additional um, obligations that don't seem to have a clear uh, demand or any kind of policy demand. So what we'd be looking for for today is that uh, we'd go uh, looking for a modified option C um, and that the modification would be drop conditions two and four that would emphasize 70th as the collector and remove the conditions related to 69th Avenue. So I'll take questions. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have questions for the applicant? No questions from for you at this time. Stick around; there might be some later. We might have another fire drill. I, you know, I need a lawyer, so I'll be there. <laughs> I had nothing to do with the fire oh, drill, no, by no, the no, way. No, <laughs> okay. At this time, is there anyone in the audience? Do we have signed up? I believe we have Westminster signed up that would like to make a comment. Yes, John Carpenter. Please step forward. State your name and address for the record. <clears throat> The, excuse me, the Director of Community Development for the City of Westminster. My address, City Hall, is uh, 93, excuse me, 4800 West 92nd Avenue in Westminster. Um, I would like to distribute a letter from our City Manager to uh, County Administrator, County Manager Todd Leopold. Here. And I would like to provide some background uh, of some of the points. Uh, I'll talk about the letter once you all have a copy of that. Um, if you wouldn't mind putting up the slide of the Westminster Station Plan, I would really appreciate it. We have been involved in the um, transport transportation planning effort in this area with RTD and CDOT for a number of years. In 2004, uh, the voters of, of the metropolitan area approved the Fast Tracks plan, which included, among other things, provision of a state station along the Northwest Rail Line uh, in Westminster. We were very grateful for that. When uh, the announcement was made as part of the RTD Eagle P3 project that the station would actually be in place, we were very enthused. However, as a part of the original plan for RTD, a surface parking lot was proposed, which basically um, took a lot of the uh, TOD development potential away from the site. So we developed the plan you see in front of us, which was developed in full consultation and knowledge and support of our city council over a number of years to make sure that the redevelopment in this area reflected those. So I'd like to cover some of the points of the letter here. Um, basically, the first paragraph talks about our request, and that is to find a way to accommodate 69th Avenue, and we'll explain 
the rationale and reasoning for that in a moment. Secondly, um, we've talked about uh, the plan, which again, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I can explain the rationale of this because that was one of the questions asked earlier. The area that you see on the plan shows an aspiration of what may happen over a 30, 40 year period. As you can imagine, development is not under control of the city, it's under the control of developers who choose to invest in either a city or a county. What we have done though is prepared a plan that shows a vision for how this TOD area could develop. It makes the assumption that having a rail station will be a game changer for the region. That is certainly evident throughout the metropolitan area. So, critical part of that was to create a transportation system that would provide a road system to the station, which if you look on the screen is provided by what is called 69th Avenue off the Federal Boulevard, as well as 70th Avenue at some point. 71st Avenue exists currently. None of the streets that are shown on the plan 70, south of 71st Avenue exists presently. So part of the uh, exercise of planning was to come up with a plan that showed a way to create a new urbanist development, pulling development to the street, providing convenient access to the station without um, providing a, a gigantic sea of parking. Uh, as was alluded to in earlier testimony, RTD's plan for Westminster was to have a 20, 15 to 20 acre parking ride, in essence, no structured parking, no development potential for TOD in this area. If you look at the environmental reports that were done for this area, that is what is recommended. We did not accept that as the future of this part of Westminster. So our city council aggressively in, uh, instructed staff to come up with a plan, which we share with you today, and to negotiate with RTD to come up with an alternative that would enable the plan you see on the screen become reality. A key part of that was to create structured parking. And as was pointed out um, by staff, your staff, the gray area by the letter B on the plan shows the parking structure that is now being designed. City did um, select the Beck Group to do a design build project for that. Construction will be commencing this summer with an opening um, early to mid-2016. We did an IGA with RTD that has been referenced here today. The key component of that IGA was to say, in lieu of RTD spending basically $10 million to buy all of the Nolan RV property that was referenced, some additional land and build a surface parking, would you please allow us, RTD, to take that money and build a parking structure to build the road network you see up there on the screen, build the green uh, area at the station that sort of looks like a little amphitheater up there, do something that will really be an outstanding addition to the metropolitan area that RTD will be proud of and the city of Westminster proud of and hopefully Adams County will be proud of. They, uh, after a two, difficult two and a half year negotiation period, agreed to that and so now, as of 2012, we have an agreement that makes those provisions I just mentioned. As a part of that, there were a lot of discussions with um, CDOT, with NR, as our, NRTD as well. Uh, what is shown on the plan is, a, is basically a gateway street to the station, which on the plan is shown as 69th Avenue. It's intended to be renamed Westminster Station Drive. The idea is to bring a brand new street through an area that would be controlled by development that would direct people both for drop-off purposes near the station as well as bus, um, bus transit and, and user, trans, um, user trips going to the parking structure. So that um, sort of the idea of 69th Avenue. The other idea is that this development is over 100 acres and relies on 71st Avenue, 70th Avenue, and other streets for access. Uh, early on, we had conversations with um, CDOT regarding spacing of traffic signals. And basically, we're told, as was talked about here, that 
to get the, tr the access point and signalized intersection 69th Avenue would require uh, the relocation or decommissioning and decommissioning of 70th. The idea that this plan shows is actually adding, going from one signal serving a 100 acre area on the east side and west side of Federal to two signals. And that is accomplished by decommissioning the signal at 70th, moving a signal to 71st Avenue, and building a new signal at 69th Avenue. As was referenced by the email from Don May, the executive director of the Adams County Housing Authority, there have been numerous conversations with stakeholders, property owners and the like in this area, many public hearings, many public um, meetings to talk about this idea. And from apparently from uh, Don's email, that is being braced by Adams County Housing Authority. So what that really does is provide additional opportunities, economic development opportunities by having those two signals. It also gives additional opportunities for patrons to RTD, uh, to our station to access that. If they're going north or south, they have, they have two signals, wise intersection locations that they can pick from. Um, our agreement with RTD calls for a traffic signal on 69th Avenue because that is the um, most feasible on opening day and again sets up the opportunity for a second, excuse me, second signal at 71st Avenue. Um, so that we, we, we've also eventually would like to get 70th Avenue um, put through. We've actually investigated the cost of doing that. Um, our estimate just for land acquisition is probably around 1.2 million. We actually did an appraisal on that property. And at some point that is a value and would like to do that. Our general uh, approach though is again, move, moving on 69th Avenue. We actually have acquired all the right of way needed for that from the owners of the RV park, Nolan RV. Um, demolition of some of the buildings will be underway next month to accommodate that. So that's the basic premise. Just to cover some of the points here um, in the letter. Again, this project has been ongoing really for almost nine years in terms of, of this, um, the, the information that we've been sharing. The um, IGAs I've covered, I did want to cover our relationship a bit with uh, Mr. Merlino. Uh, back in early 2013, we were approached by Mr. Merlino regarding his interest in uh, what we call the Northgate project. It's basically the vacant land lying east of Federal Boulevard and south of 72nd Avenue, both north and south of 70th Avenue. Obviously, the area south is an unincorporated, but the area to the north is in the city. Um, we, as the city, have an interest in the redevelopment of the Northgate property north of 70th Avenue. Um, there have been property owners who have sold their property in there, and the idea that the city came up with is to come up with a master plan, basically, to provide guidance to prospective um, buyers of that property on what would be allowed or not allowed. So uh, Mr. Molino and the city entered into a consulting contract for the development of those plans, and I have a copy of that if anybody has an interest in seeing that. Basically, it said that multiple uh, development plans would be prepared for that entire property, both north, north and south of 70th Avenue. And the reason for that is the intention was by Mr. Molino to acquire both properties or to work with developers to acquire both properties and annex the land south of 70th Avenue into the city of Westminster. Part of that contract calls for the preparation of entitlement documents that would be sub to, submitted to the city to allow this development to, appro to be approved. Uh, as a part of that, numerous plans were developed. Um, just to share with you one of those if you don't mind passing that out. Uh, the plan I'm passing out was prepared uh, by a, the firm of Van Meters, William and Pollock. And uh, as you, if you look at the very bottom, it was prepared in April 2013, and the client is Hunter Don LLC, which is a company um, owned by Jim Merlino. So this, again, was just one of many plans that were developed to, to show how the entire property, both north and south of 70th Avenue, could be developed. But it 
it shows 69th Avenue. In this alternative, it shows the road sweeping to the south and going through the potential future park. Uh, as an aside on that, the city of Westminster has had numerous conversations with um, Karma, which w was then renamed as Brookfield Development several years ago, about the park. Uh, early on, the idea was that, develop that park would be developed by Highland Hills Park and Recreation District. And so the city has had several conversations with Highland Hills about the possibility of 68th Avenue extending through the park either in this alignment or, as was suggested earlier, in a northerly alignment. Um, at one point, there was a meeting with Mid Midtown uh, where they actually said, would the city like to develop the park? And there was not an interest in doing so. But the notion of roadways cutting through the park and connecting down to 68th Avenue has been discussed with um, the ownership group at Brookfield over an extended period of time. So this is not a, a surprise or new idea by any means. And clearly it was known and embraced um, by Mr. Merlino as, early, as, more, as recently as April of 2013 when this was put together. I'm just showing you this simply to show this is not a new idea. Um, uh, the information that was sent by email over the weekend shows that there was knowledge um, and, and understanding of Adams County staff of the interest in city, of the city getting this connection for a long time. Um, so that is um, the, the point of sharing this with you on that point. So when we uh, found out that Mr. Merlino was proposing to annex the city or excuse me, or not annex the city of Westminster, but develop in, in Adams County. That occurred in the fall. Excuse me, and, but you know, I, I I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know, this is you know, if there's if there's more points you want to touch on, I know that there was a question asked right. of you by one of the commissioners. If you could try to get to that, so that we can sure. have that, because sure. I think there's a lot of questions that we need to. Yes, Commissioner Hanson. Yes, I'm gonna ask the question in a very specific way but but um, the first thing I'm gonna say is is that I don't really care about what happened and who did what plan when and who did what to whom and everything else that's not what we're deciding here what we're deciding here is is what is in the community interest okay and so you know the bad blood between you and this developer um, you know I, I don't care um, so if we can keep this to the, the merits of the particular project um, and I would say the same thing to the developer too. You know, it doesn't really matter who did what to whom, you know, in the city of Westminster in the last 10 years. Um, what I want to know is why 69th Avenue and not 70th? Why is that more, why is that a better choice than 70th? Okay, but do, would you mind putting up the plan from, again? From Westminster's perspective. Okay, uh, if you look at the plan, the idea, let, let me back up. This area right now in no way resembles what's up with the plan. It's a series of older industrial areas. It's honestly the worst part of Westminster. You don't take out of town visitors when, to show off what Westminster look in this area. It's very needy. It's, it's uh, very much in need of a redevelopment. So the idea of our plan was to work on the, the station where you see it and have a drive that would turn people's attitude around about this ugly, depressed area. And in a way that would be affordable to the city, that we could buy the right of way needed. The area that's shown on sea, by the way, is stormwater detention. So that's the low spot. So we thought by having the main road and entrance into this area by a green area that is showcasing the park, 40-acre park that, that you all are actually a joint venture partner on. You're providing financial support for the development of that park. Makes a lot of sense uh, versus having the, the main entrance be more inboard into the development. Okay, um, I, 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 I understand. Was, was that, is that the main point that basically well, we want it to be adjacent to a grassy, green, attractive area? It also uh, 
provides the ideal access into the park and ride um, as concluded by both city staff and RTD. Uh, I didn't bring the details showing the parking structure, but it basically presumes buses will come from the south, come up and loop th back through the parking structure um, in a manner that um, is accommodated by this plan and it is not accommodated by 70th Avenue. Uh, and these plans are you know, currently being finalized for bid um, or for construction to commence here so, in the next few so, months. So the whole point of doing this plan in the first place, which I support, by the way, I mean, I, I think that you're right, and we need to redevelop this, this area of Federal Boulevard is, is obviously really, really important. Um, so the goal is to redevelop this area, to take advantage of the transit-oriented development, uh, to, you know, stabilize an area that's economically disadvantaged. I mean, all, all of those things that go along with that. That's what the goal is in terms of what we're trying to accomplish. I, I think all of us are trying to accomplish that. Is that a fair statement? Yes, and, yes absolutely. And ultimately what you're saying is you develop this plan in order to do that, and 69th Avenue is what works in the context of this particular plan. 69th and 71st, the spacing of those to again allow two traffic okay. signals I, 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 Having two traffic, that's a different question altogether. We're not two traffic signals or one traffic signal are the best thing. I don't really know the answer, you know, to that particular question. Um, well, let me ask you this. Why is two traffic signals more important than one? Well, it, I think any developer would probably say that having access to a signalized intersection adds value as permeability. Um, again, Don May, uh, in his letter, I think so, acknowledges so, that. So, so I, I what think they're saying is, is you're trying to accomplish multiple things here at the same time. Absolutely. You're trying to create a green space, and you're trying to maximize development opportunity on this particular site. And accommodate RTD's desires, yes. So I, I guess my question is, let's say for sake of argument, this is kind of the counterfactual, right? What would happen if you couldn't get one at 69th and 71st, and you only had one at 70th? Are you telling me that if that happened, that we would not be able to redevelop this area, that it would continue to be economically disadvantaged, that it would be harmful aesthetically, and that it would not, and that RTD would not be able to accommodate that. Is that what you're telling me? Um, I'm, what I'm saying is it would be much preferred to have 69th Avenue. I think development at some level is probably going to occur. What I've outlined is the optimal scenario for both RTD and the overall development of the property. Would it develop at a lesser uh, pace uh, without this? Probably, yeah. I, I guess it would be. Okay, because um, I, because I, because I, I really think that's what the issue is here, right? I mean, I understand that that accommodates your plan, 69th and 71st, accommodates your kind of vision in this particular area, you know, which is kind of interesting because what you said in your opening first. 30 seconds was is that, well, this isn't really Westminster, really it's developers that are going to be developing this anyway, which means that this is just a concept plan that we don't even know what it's going to look like because someone hasn't bought the land for development anyway. Um, so in reality, you're telling me, you know, as a city of Westminster employee that, that, uh, that yeah, the developers are going to develop it, but we really know best because this is our plan? If I intended, if that's what I said, I did not intend that. What the city is doing, the city developed a plan, like many cities and counties do, to show how redevelopment efforts can, can work. And so what we are committed to do is building certain roads in the plan to facilitate development um, that, that will create development parcels. So for example, on the Nolan property, they're actually retaining, the Nolan family is retaining the land north of 69th Avenue, um, and we're, um, doing some land swaps with them with the land we own to assemble that for development. But we are actually building 69th Avenue, a portion of the street where B is, which is Grove Street, Hooker Street. The city is actually going to be having, well, those roads will be under construction in the next couple months. So, but we're also working with developers. We have a developer, the same developer that is um, doing the development of the Boulder uh, Transit Village at 30th and Pearl and Boulder, Peterson Development. Uh, responded to an RFP and was selected as a developer of the land around our, our um, parking structure. So we're negotiating with them currently to do that development. I, I, I understand. Here's, here's kind of the last question. It's, it's kind of the same question I asked a little bit earlier, but I'm not, not really sure if I got the, a, cl a clean answer on that. If, 
it were 70th Avenue that were signalized. Is Westminster going to be able to redevelop this, this area so that it is an improvement over where it was and provides a nice gateway into the transit stop, you know, a little bit to the west? Are you, or are you telling me that, that, no, that's just not possible, we can't do that? I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's not optimal and okay. there's additional costs associated with that, certainly. So I'm going to ask a quick question here, and that is to kind of piggyback on what was just talked about, you know, my question would be, is Westminster saying that without the change in the lights, that 69th Avenue, 70th Avenue, and 71st Avenue would possibly not be developed the way that they're planned in their, in their draft proposal? Or is that something that they would just have to um, look at different access abilities at each one of those streets? We would clearly have to modify some of our designs probably, yes. We would have to do that. But in that. no way does it change or would it mandate a change in your plan on the Westminster side? No, I'm saying it might if 70th Avenue is a signal. As I mentioned earlier, the design for the parking structure did not assume that, it assumed access from uh, Grove Street, which is the street to the south. So there would probably be some redesign plus um, you know, we have acquired the right of way to build 69th Avenue under the assumption that would be the access. <coughs> if that's not available in a single signalized fashion, that would accelerate our need to find, well, probably over a million dollars just to acquire property and then an additional, whatever, maybe half million to a million to build 70th Avenue that is not budgeted anywhere. So that would be an impact of that decision. Right. Commissioner Odoricio. You, you said for that parking structure, that's where uh, the letter B is, correct? Yes. And so just to help me understand, the, the, the flow as proposed by you guys at Westminster would be that uh, the buses would enter at Grove or would they enter at 70th Avenue? The, the buses would enter 69th Avenue, then they would go north on Grove uh, and, and, and go access the bus drop-off area that will be by that. What is shown here is the plan that is, um, actually I think perhaps you guys had one of your plans that had the more recent plan that showed the bus loading area. Uh, what is shown there is, is um, not quite up to date, but basically the concept is that there, there is an open area, area where the bus loading will occur. As was mentioned, it was moved off 68th at 9th Avenue. So that's the way the buses would circulate, as well as, pe as, pe as, well as people accessing the park and ride. Uh, there is no plan to build Grove Street north of B. That's, at least, that's not funded currently. So Grove Street would dead end, basically, at the entrance to the parking structure. Grove, you mean coming from the south? Coming north. from the south. At some point, obviously, the intention is to build all those roadways, sure. but initially, um, given the amount of money the city has and RTD has to build infrastructure, that's where we're stopping the road, just so on, at the letter B. Okay, so on my screen, I see what you see up above to your left. And so, so far you've mentioned that there's been two changes to this actual map since this map was created, correct? This was a illustrative plan developed a, probably about a year ago. Okay, and, and the point I'm making, I'd like to make is that in the very fact that this plan continues to change even now indicates that you have some flexibility in this conceptual plan. In fact, you've already identified two significant changes that are not on this map that we see in front of us. And, and with that in mind, I would look at, we've got a developer who's ready to go and develop now. And with the current alignment at 70th Avenue, our developer can continue to develop on the east side and we can have some continuity of the businesses that are on that side currently now with the AutoZone, Goodwill, and understanding that those may change, it sounds like it would be easier for you to continue modifying this plan that's continuing to be modified along the way than it would be for us to accommodate this plan which isn't really set in stone. 
Does that make sense? Well, I guess what I would say is that in terms of the accommodations that we're requesting on the east side of federal, the city has offered to pay the cost of acquiring right of way from the auto zone. There would not be any requirement or impact on goodwill. There is land to do that. It would not require sale of the property or redevelopment. It's a sliver of land that's not currently being used by their facility. And by doing so, that actually is a benefit, we believe, to the development providing more immediate access and more direct access to our TOD area. So I think there are, there are benefits derived by that developer and by the future residents of that area to have a more direct access to our train station. But, but we're not hearing that from this developer nor the one in Midtown who are suggesting that we keep the alignment at 70th and therefore you could create that the direct access to this transit area happen at 70th instead of 69th. So I know you may say that you know what's better for them than they do. My question is, is isn't it easier for you to modify this plan, which is currently being modified, than it would be for us to ask developers, existing businesses, and the county to, change, to, to accommodate kind of a conceptual plan that clearly isn't finished? It's, it's not a conceptual plan. We are building the roads. We are building the parking structure. We are building all these things beginning about two months from now. The final, the, the designs are nearly completed. It's not conceptual. It's not moving. It's on the verge of being built. We, we have to open our facilities with RTD or we face liquidated damages of $6,000 a day. If we don't get the station opened, by um, July of next year. So we are in a rush to build everything I described in the manner I've just described it. So we, we cannot afford a time delay that will jeopardize our, our uh, situation legally and that would potentially subject us to liquidated damages. Uh, I guess the other part of that though, again, there's a, there's a financial impact here um, to the city, if there cannot be a signalized intersection of 69th Avenue, that sets up a cascade of additional costs that the city will need to occur that are not currently budgeted. Can that be done in the future? Yes, yeah, as, as money can, can allow or be provided, we can budget the money for the access on 70th and like, but we don't have those monies budgeted currently. You have the money budgeted for 69th? Yes, we do. But you don't have it bu budgeted for 70th? That is correct. So what would it take for you to move the budgeted money that you have for 69th up to 70th? The whole, the whole premise of this plan is, is relying on 69th Avenue. We cannot acquire the right of way and get that road built in time, I'm speculating here, and meet our deadlines. We don't have any design on 70th Avenue. Um, whether the landowner would be willing to uh, sell his land voluntarily without pursuing condemnation, I don't know. I mean, that's a probably a you know, half year to year long period just to acquire the right of way. So, so, so I'm, I'm just letting you know, my, I'm, I'm trying to work with, I, I like the idea of us trying to work with you. It's just, it's hard for us to say that here that, that this is set in stone, that you have to have it at 69th that there's very little flexibility in this plan when I see that there's been significant changes of, to this very plan that we're looking at, like the change where the buses are going to pick up drop off, the, where Grove Street will or will not exist or continue. And to me, it, it just seems to indicate that, that it appears that, that, that the parties might be a little stubborn here on something that really could change with design rather than what would change functionally elsewhere across the street. Does that make sense? Because we already have a light at 70th, correct? Yes. So we'd have to remove that and build a new one, correct? Yes, so, and that's funded. So would you be able to save money by not having to build a new light and apply that to maybe some of these other design changes? Uh, you know, potentially that's probably $200,000, yes. But that would not cover the entire cost. But it Com would help, yes. Commissioner Pulowski. Okay, the tug of war. Um, and these are questions that I am not getting out of anything that I've looked at here, I guess, for a while. But the Midtown and the Popinio um, projects, how many housing, how many houses or dwellings is that for both projects? 
Uh, the Pomponio subdivision is proposing 248 units. Mm -hmm. The Midtown development will have approximately 1,100 uh, dwelling units. I just have to look at these things kind of common sense approach. We have two big, but ends up being two bigger projects, far bigger than I realize. On your, on your sheet that you handed out to us in the 2011, August 2011 uh, figures, total required parking spaces, 4,341. Is that for the actual RTD area that you're talking about right now? No, that's the entirety of everything you see on the plan. Oh, the entirety. My concern is, taking new developments, and, and obviously the RTD is going to be a, a new development too. How many parking spaces are in that project area directly? The parking structure will have about 500 parking spaces. So you, you got a huge number <laughs> of vehicles and trying to develop a project. To me, there has to be a better common sense way to work this out. That's just my, no questions, just my comments, I guess. Commissioner Henry. I, I have a question. Um, now we, we've been looking at fast tracks coming in for a lot of years. Was there ever any conversations between the county and Westminster in regards to this possible station coming in and, and road alignment? Uh, in the back, in the past, there have been conversations. As a matter of fact, as a part of the, uh, I'm trying to think uh, here, the open house that we just had um, last week. Well, I mean, we've been talking about this for like 10 years. Yeah, there have been conversations. I, I know the city the of Thornton's time. had conversations with uh, unincorporated Adams County regarding the Welby station and realignment the Welby. Hmm. It didn't seem to be any of an issue now that they're actually getting stations and developers are coming forward that they've already knew that you know, the two entities have already talked about right. you know, the alignment of. So I'm wondering if Westminster ever had conversations with Adams County regarding the 69th Avenue since you've known that it's been coming all these years that, you know, possibly then the developer would have been aware that, you know, you needed that 69th well, Avenue. The developer was aware. As I mentioned earlier, we had a contract. I, I mean, I, I know you don't but want did, me to, did Adams to say count, these things, I, but it's reality. Well, we, I, I mean, I don't, I don't I know didn't, how. I, Mr. Matoya, was it on any of our, our framework or our plans or anything like that, the 69th Avenue? Um, no. It wasn't? No. Okay. Did, Not did, with the signal. So, yeah, was Westminster ever, I mean, in the, I know you've been here at least a decade. You're yes. one of the few left. <laughs> Yeah, is there, I mean, was there ever any conversations about the alignment of roads and things like this with the new station? I have not participated in the 69th Avenue potential alignment with the traffic signal my entire time here, 13 years, um, nor am I aware of any discussions directly with the uh, planning staff. All right, thank you. There is language in the plan, though, that makes reference to this, and I shared this with Mr. Montoya last week, and it was referenced in the letter that specifically talks about the potential of, of a connection at this location. It's not physically shown in the plan, but... Um, yeah. Commissioner Hanson. So if, if you couldn't get a light at 69th Avenue, I assume that it would be a right-in, right-out kind of scenario. That's what it would have to be, I think, from a traffic engineering standpoint. Is that a fair, is that a fair statement? Um, hopefully full turn. I, I, <coughs> I can't speak. I'm not an engineer, but I guess, I guess if, if it is a full turn, your IGA with RTD um, that you signed last week, does it require... You know, I, I understand you're building the station. You have to get all that in, and I, 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 I get that piece. Does it require in that IGA the a signal at 69th that, that that 69th be signalized? Does it require that it not require that it, there be a signal, but to require that that particular road be signalized? Uh, my interpretation is yes. Uh, the CDOT and uh, CDOT drafted this IGA. By the way, this is their document. Well, um, but I, I thought it was an IGA it, with with with. RTD, you confused me there for no, a second. Pre, pre, we already have an IGA with RTD that is signed. That was executed a couple of years ago. The one that was approved last Monday by our city council is with CDOT, and it specifically provides that there will be a signal, signalized intersection at 69th Avenue. Okay. 
And you've known about this controversy of 69th versus 70th for a while, because I think the Planning Commission actually predates the signing of that IGA, right? Planning Commission. Our Planning Commission hearing predates the signing yes. of the IGA. Yes. So why on earth did Westminster sign an IGA knowing there was a possibility that we could approve something that was different than what you envisioned? Well, based on the understanding we had with CDOT, that they were going to require the closure of a signal at 70th Avenue for the installation of 69th Avenue, and that was the direction that we were given this is the pathway Cause, cause I, I kinda, to, to I kind of feel like that the reason why Westminster did that was because they wanted to put pressure on the the uh, Board of County Commissioners to to approve it the way that you want it that was not the intention whatsoever we have been working on this IGA for a number of months or, well actually probably two years the some of the main provisions of the IGA are the city funding upgrades and the aesthetic improvements of that bridge. Um, so we have been negotiating on those, like I said, a couple years. So this, this is nothing new. The timing, I agree, may look strange, but we have been on this. They've, they just, um, CDOT just issued a notice to proceed for the construction project. So they needed to get this IGA done before that construction could proceed. So that's why this is being done when it is. It, it, it seems to me that your IGA with, with CDOT, which would be consistent with the communications that we've got here, says that if you were to close, if you were to do a signal at 69th, you would have to close 70th. I get that piece because they're too close together. Um, well, that is CDOT's conclusion. We actually provided a traffic study that showed that both signals could coexist, right. but I, I that's their I understand position. That, but that's, that's, that's their conclusion. So it yes. seems to me that what they're saying is, is that if you put in 69th, you'd have to close 70th, and I get that piece. But it doesn't seem to me that it requires Westminster to put in, my, put in 69th specifically. It's just saying that if you close 70th, or close, do 69th, you have to close 70th. Is that a fair estimate of what the IGA actually says? I don't think the IGA says that. I think that's background information. The IGA simply says, City of Westminster and see it, I agree. We're going to provide money to do these enhancements to the bridge. We will also provide the money for the traffic signal if, at 69th. If there's, a, if there's a traffic signal at 69th. I don't believe it says if, but maybe. I mean, I have the agreement. I can look at it if you want. I've provided that to you folks. Okay. I think I just want to clarify a couple things. And one is that you stated earlier that regardless of what happens with the signal, the construction will continue the it won't hold up anything i mean you know in my concern is that you know adams county and westminster have gone to great lengths to make this tod and this this uh, rail stop happen um, adams county has invested quite a bit of money and both in land in kind and other areas and we've made investments to make this happen we have a vested interest to see this happen um, I do not want to see the project held up because of a street light, but everything that I've heard today is that it would not be held up. It would be an inconvenience, but it would not be held up regardless of what happens with the street light. What I've also heard during this conversation is that there is a cost for changing what Westminster wants to do, but in the same vein, you could say the same about on the Adams County side, that there is an equal cost to change what has been documented and been studied over the last decade for the federal boulevard and the uh, midtown projects that are going in there and it's really a concern you know who who at the end of the day ends up with that cost and we have a builder that is ready to go has their plans is ready to make break ground and put up these buildings and become exactly what you said which by the way a lot of those neighborhoods that you're talking about down there are unincorporated neighborhoods and we do want to try to improve the area um, at the end of the day this builder wants to come in and build and they're ready to go and they're waiting for us today to make a determination that affects them moving forward whereas i hear on the plan on the westminster side is that even with 70th that conversation doesn't even look like there's going to be a conceptual plan for that other than this until 
the property is dealt with. And so I don't see that putting undue burden on our side, this is my opinion right now, is going to promote healthy growth in the area in the immediate future. So that's just my opinion. And I do not see it as holding up a project that is funded and is needed in the area. I don't see it as that. I haven't heard the, the argument that this is exactly what's going to happen and this is what's going to happen if you don't approve this. So I, I haven't heard that argument yet. I've heard a lot of preferences, but I haven't heard the argument that it would hold up anything. So just an opinion. Commissioners, any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to make comment on this? Would the applicant like to step forward again? I have a question for you. Commissioner Rodriguez no. has a question for oh, the applicant. I'll, I'll respond to questions. What would the burden be on your development, number one? And what would the burden be on the existing businesses east of federal? if the light were to move from 70th down to 69th? Well, the movement of the light, if the movement of the light necessitates moving 69th as a collector through the property, uh, I think one of the exhibits shows that. It really isolates about 20% of the project, takes away sort of the critical mass of the project because it's really not clear what, what happens with the parse and that's sort of isolated. Um, and remove some of the actual units from the project given the width of the collector versus a neighborhood street. So it would have, you know, potentially, you know, delay at best, perhaps, re you know, redesign. And it's not clear if the project, you know, is economically vi viable at that point. Um, so it has a severe impact on the project. As far as the businesses along there, um, well, if the pro I mean, uh, Mr. Carpenter represented that it, the, all this can happen in a sliver of land that does not disrupt the business uh, that is there, the auto zone. I do not believe that's true. I think to put a collector there, you're taking a significant portion of the auto zone property, requires uh, acquisition of part of the Pomponio Terrace property, which is that foot that comes out, and a portion of the Goodwill property. So it's sort of three, three entities that have to come together uh, to coordinate, and the direct impact on the on the newly expanded um, auto zone is not clear, but um, I believe that area is their detention and parking, so have sig significant impacts. Also, removing 70th has a significant impact on the uh, viability of the, the gas station on the corner of 70th and Federal as a signalized intersection adds to the viability of the real estate on the corner. Commissioner Odoricio, any other questions? No, I just my observation is that to, to, to modify as Westminster recommends, uh, I believe, based on what I've heard today, looks like it would create burden on not just this new development, but existing businesses that are currently in operation. And I'm still not convinced that I saw the burden on Westminster to modify their plan, which continues to change as we speak. And so therefore, I'm going to recommend that we um, go with an option that does allow us not to kick the can entirely down the road because we're still going to have to address this, but for us to allow the development as recommended or proposed today of the uh, Pomponio Terrace, um, and then we'll address the road issue and the intersection issue with Westminster, um, I think, moving forward. Because I still have questions. I still don't understand how Westminster can pay to move the light down to 69th on the east side, but they don't have any sort of resources to modify it on the west side to stay at 70th. So we are still in that question and answer. I don't believe that was a motion as of yet. Okay. Um, I, think, I think my question is kind of what I posed to Westminster, right? So Westminster stated that even though there wouldn't be a light or if there were a light or wouldn't a light wouldn't affect moving forward as far as their side of the project. Can I ask that same question of yours? If there is a proposal to move the light or keep the light, how did those different ones affect your ability to move forward? Yeah, again, if moving the light to 69th requires removal of the light at 70th and a collector 
69th as a collector through the property as illustrated on uh, one of the slides has a, a significant impact on the project. One delay, we're, again, we're in a market that is accepting the product that we're building. And two, um, reduction of the number of units and isolation of a significant portion of the project does jeopardize the financial viability of the project. Can I ask another question too? If, if for if for moving the light, if we were to move the light to 69th and get rid of the light at 70th, you would have a collector road that would run and bisect the community that you have planned. And is that in any way, shape, or form a safety concern for the community? Um, collectors uh, typically allow higher speed traffic. They're much wider as far as crossing. Um, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I believe collectors are, you know, they form a barrier. People sort of self-select and don't cross them as much. Um, so the safety question is one that we could research, but it's common sense says yes. It's a, it's a wider street with a higher volume of traffic traveling at a higher speed. Uh, again, my bigger concern is that that creates a barrier separating two pieces, making a small portion, uh, parcel now two parcels. Mm -hmm. um, which, which jeopardizes the viability of the project. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for the applicant? Thank no you. other questions for the Thank applicant. You. Is there, do we have a representative from CDOT? Could we have CDOT come up and give us a kind of a background on this? Please state your name and address for the record. I am Jacob Ogera with CDOT, and my office address is 4670 North Holy Street. And I am, just to give a little background, I'm the resident engineer for the project that's going to replace the bridge of the BSNF Railroad on Ferro Boulevard. And I did guide the design and the development of the IGA in question, and also I will also manage the construction of the project. Now, <clears throat> I'll move on specifically to the IGA concept. The intent of the, I guided the development of the IGA, and the intent of the IGA was to have the city of Westminster commit to paying for any of the elements that they include in the project. Now, should they or should any aspect of that proposal be removed from the project, uh, Westminster is not under any obligation to pay for those commitments. And the IGA is a living eye document. If additional items are identified that needed to be added to the project, we would use, amend the IGA for funding purpose. So essentially what I'm saying is the IGA is for funding purposes. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do you have a question? Yeah. Commissioner Hanson? That's kind of what I gathered. Basically, Westminster wants a light at 69th Avenue, and CDOT said, if you want it, you've got to pay for it. Is that a fair statement? It's fair. And so from CDOT's perspective, does CDOT care whether it's a 70th or 69th Avenue? For all information, I've got that within CDOT, no. Uh, OK. Any other questions? Commissioner Rodericio. But you do prefer to not have multiple lights within a three block radius, correct? We do not want to see light at 69th, 70th, 71st, 72nd, or we don't want to see a light at 69th at 70th. And that's the guidance I was given. Sure, and I think that makes sense. Um, what are your thoughts about Westminster saying that according to their study that that's not a problem. Uh, I'm not a subject matter of that uh, issue. However, I've indicated to the subject matter experts that they need to inform me of their decisions because uh, during the construction process, I would not construct a light at 6 or 9 without their approval. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions for? I see none. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I will call once again, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a public statement on this matter at this time? Okay. 
What is the pleasure of the board? Commissioner, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, move to approve. Um, this is case uh, Pomponio Terrace, case number PRC 2014 14. Um, currently, staff is recommending two findings of fact, 23 conditions, precedent, and two notes. And, you know, from my perspective, I, I think the developer is, is, is right um, in removing the two conditions precedent two and four in reference to 69th Avenue. Um, you know, from my perspective, it sounds to me like it basically is going to cost Westminster a little bit of extra money to have to do 70th instead of 69th, or they're going to end up with a situation where they don't have a signal at 69th, uh, which they wouldn't have to pay for anyway, according to what CDOT just said. Um, and so to me, that seems like it's kind of an inconvenience. Um, it doesn't seem like it's in the public's interest, frankly, to spend more money to add to move the light one block, uh, just because uh, Westminster anticipated that they were going to do that. Um, and, you know, in addition to that, I haven't heard any testimony today that will lead me to believe that that um, 69th Avenue or that, that this stop wouldn't occur because I believe that Westminster would find a way to uh, avoid $6,000 a day in liquidated damages if they didn't get it done. Um, and here we have a development that is moving forward with an existing light. CDOT doesn't care where it is whether it's the 70th or 69th, they just don't want to pay for it. Um, and, you know, I don't know why we would hold up a development uh, because Westminster planned something for the last 10 years that they didn't bother to communicate with us on. Um, and so those are kind of harsh comments, but that's, I mean, those are the facts. I mean, that's what happened in this particular case. And frankly, we should have been doing, I think everybody should have been doing a better job of communicating on this whole deal anyway. So I would move to approve it uh, with 22 findings of facts, 21 conditions precedent, removing number two and four, and two notes, and renaming, renumbering, of course, all the other conditions precedent accordingly. Second. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Pulowski? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Thank you very much. I believe we are done with our land use hearings. We are adjourned. Oh, you know we are. Does this make your executive session?